What do you consider is your greatest frisky achievement? Story one. I was going down on my wife once and apparently I was doing too well. She punched me in the forehead out of nowhere and I asked what the hell. She said she was about to black out. I still bring that one up with her. We now have a discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story two, conditioning my boyfriend to stand at full salute when Benny and the Jets plays. He was complaining one day that he hated the song. So I decided to go down on him whenever it played to give him better memories to associate with it. Benny and the Jets now makes him a combo of frisky and mad. Story three. About eight and a half months ago, my wife and I decided we were going to start trying to have a baby. My wife even joked around that if I could get her pregnant by February, she would buy me a brand new Boston Bruins jersey. She always had this insecurity that she might not be able to get pregnant or it might be tough. I decided to make things a little spicy and banged her right on the kitchen table, and she said it was hands down her favorite time. Anyway, I should get to meet my daughter in about two weeks. I will be wearing my jersey. Story four, banging someone way out of my league, both looks wise and book smart wise, then marrying her and knocking her up. Story five, my younger brother had a female friend who I hooked up with one night casually when we were teens, some heavy petting and reaching into each other's underwear. She then told me she was a virgin and was ready to sleep with me. I told her she should wait and lose it to someone who she loved to make it special. Years later, we bumped into each other and had a few drinks. Both now being single, she invited me back to her house and divulged that she'd always been thankful that she'd held on to it and did lose it to a guy that she loved at the time. Then we admitted that we had both fantasized about each other since and proceeded to have some crazy, drunk, unbridled banging. It was like five years of foreplay. Edit, some extra details. I was 18, she was 16. My brother was dating someone else at the time. We dated for a year after our eventual rendezvous. There was a more elaborate dialogue between us than summarized above. She tentatively said that she felt she was ready to lose her virginity to me. We were both on the bed in my bedroom at this point. We fooled around some more. I asked if she was sure. Maybe she'd rather save it for a relationship rather than on a first-time hookup. It was over 20 years ago. I can't recall verbatim. I was in university. She was in high school. We had different social circles. And I knew there was no prospect of forming a relationship. I would have felt like a jerk to have slept with her and then ghosted her. We fooled around some more. Then she reflected that she did want to wait. If she had said, no, I'm certain. I've thought about this and I want it. Then giddy up. Props to OP. We love a respectful man. Story six. After several years of marriage, my wife finally learned how to be comfortable enough during the act to finish. And I finally learned what the hell I was doing to help her get there, feeling her muscles spasm around my fingers as her fingers grip the sheets and the sounds. Best feeling ever. Okay, look, there's this like whole guide on how he did it in an edit. Quite frankly, I'm just looking through this. I don't see any way I could do this with a, a uh, YouTube friendly language. So if you want to know, you can, uh, you can try to find it yourself. Best of luck out there, everybody. Uh, story seven. I've shared this before, but it was such a unique achievement. Once I was banging with my girlfriend after taking a shower and I had water stuck in my ear. At the exact same time as I finished, my ear popped and I felt washed over by such a bizarre and amazing combination of senses. It's really hard to describe how good this eargasm felt, truly ineffable. I've tried many times since then to replicate this, but have not been successful thus far. Oh, Pete, when you mean you've tried to replicate this, do you mean you've put water in your ear intentionally before doing it? Because I, I hope not. That just sounds unnecessary and uncomfortable. Story eight. I was giving my wife a session dedicated to her. And after a while, she finishes for the first time for the night. There hadn't been any penetration up to that point. So she asked me to get on top and rough her up. She then tells me that rough penetration after finishing sometimes feels as good as finishing itself. Anyway, I get on top, and I last all of about a minute, because I'm already at 99% just from her moaning and seeing her squirm for the previous half hour. She can tell what's going on and asks me if I'm finishing, and when I tell her I am, she starts her second just as I finished mine. It's so intense, it feels like she's about to pinch my dong off, and then she squirts for the first time. My wife has finished multiple times a couple times before, but this was the first time I had ever seen a woman squirt. I always thought it was a fake adult video thing. But she confessed to me that she'd been feeling the sensation more often over the past few months and had been holding it back. 
We keep towels next to the bed now. Story nine. My first girlfriend wanted to see how many times we could bang in one day, so we planned to bang a thon and spent the entire day doing it and doing it and doing it. Every other thing we did was bang. Bang breakfast, bang shower, bang TV, bang. Order pizza, bang. Tip delivery driver, bang. Eat pizza, bang. We did it 10 times in a 24 hour period. Later in life, I had another girlfriend who asked what's the most I'd ever banged in a day. When I told her this, she said, we can beat that. So I did the same thing again, but we didn't make it to 11, just tied at 10. Both of them were named Ashley, story 10. I got an ex of mine to finish so hard, she began spasming like she was having a seizure. And I called 911 for help. They arrived four minutes later. We were only two blocks from a hospital. They showed up as my ex finally stopped spasming. She was super embarrassed, and one of the paramedics looked up at me and nodded before leaving. Story 11. I was on a Tinder date with a woman who is very forthcoming about just having a lot of casual dates and casual banging if the date goes well. She asked me, what do you know about making a woman finish? I said, I know that regardless of gender, most people need about four minutes on average of consistent, meaningful stimulation in order to climax. She giggled and did that. Uh, yeah, okay, thing. About an hour later, I proved it. Story 12. My girlfriend and I were drunk in our kitchen and started banging at our dinner table. We have these old mid-century modern Danish teak chairs that are old as hell. Well, she was riding me while I sat on the chair. I was getting real into it and was about to bust, so I decided to give more vigorous thrusts. Well, as I was about to finish, the chair legs gave out, and as we were suspended in midair, I was climaxing. When we hit the floor, the impact was like the second wave, and all I could do was laugh, as I couldn't believe I just nut in midair. I then looked at my girlfriend, and she had the opposite look on her face, a look of horror. She looked at her leg, and so did I. The chair leg had broken to a sharp spear, like object, and stabbed her through the calf. We freaked out and drove her to the hospital. She was fine, and it didn't cause any serious injuries other than stitches. I remember it as being the best climax of my life, and she remembers it as being spit-roasted by me in a Danish chair. Story 13. Three months after my ex of five years and I broke up, we were talking. Really good breakup, all things considered. No fight, just talking and sad, but for the best. And I had a moment of weakness and started asking if she had been hooking up with anyone else. I hadn't even tried and wasn't interested yet since we were each other's firsts and I just wasn't mentally ready. She didn't want to tell me anything, but I pushed like an idiot. And she told me that she banged seven guys already in the three months we'd been separated and hooked up with others too, but didn't bang. I was freaking devastated and broken. She let guys do things to her she never let me do, even though I wanted to and knew I could. And even though we dated for five years, worst time of my life, a week later, I matched with someone on Tinder that was hot and was just looking for a hookup, and long story short, after talking for a little and deciding on hooking up, I got there and we started making out and getting intimate. And her roommate walked out of her room and just joined us like it was normal. Frickin' mind-blowing banging occurred. I was on my best game, and they were both incredible. They knew each other's bodies so well, and I somehow had the best banging I've ever had, and it was just completely random. Looking back, I feel like the girls had planned to have a three-way and I was just the lucky guy they ended up deciding on. But that completely restored all my confidence and cured my sadness, for sure. And to put the cherry on top, my ex is hardcore trying to bang me again. Now a year we've been apart, but still may have feelings, and I'm 100% over it. But I'm DTF, so life is good. Story 14. Sorry for my bad English. It's my second language. Not sure if this fits here, not proud of the moment, but I am proud of the result. Me and my wife had kids and decided that that was enough children. We got married after the kids were born and went on a honeymoon. We got drunk and banged without protection. The next day, we panicked a bit and went to a drugstore and got a regret pill. My wife took it to the hotel room. Crisis canceled. After this, we thought nothing about it and continued with the honeymoon. Like half an hour later, she gave me a blowy. She never, ever gives them to me, as she chokes easily. So this was a real treat for me. When I finished, I finished hard, and the shot landed at the back of her mouth, and she puked all over the floor in my dong. We laughed it off and joked about it for the rest of the vacation. A few weeks after, when we came home, she didn't get her period. We got anxious, and it turned out that she was pregnant. The only time we had banged without protection was at the hotel room. 
When she puked after the blowy, she must have puked out the pill as well. So now we have a three kids. The youngest is as amazing as the other two, and I'm proud to have him. But he must never, ever find out how he was conceived. Story 15. So I had my first threesome literally four days ago, which had been a bucket list item since I was 17. 34 now. It had been something I fantasized about, and luckily I'm with a girl who I can be completely open and honest about my desires too, and vice versa. We ended up hooking up with her best friend, and my girlfriend curated it exactly how I had fantasized about it, and much more. And we all had an incredible time. It was bonkers hot. After we finished and her friend left the next morning, she asked me if it was everything I had hoped for. I told her I think I just won life, and we're doing it again in two days. People, find someone who matches your drive and kinkiness. Intimate honesty with a partner you truly love results in the best achievements. Maybe this is a hot take. Threesomes, multiple partner stuff. Not for me. I haven't even really thought about it, and then I'm just not interested. Seems like it could get messy too easily, and honestly, I don't know. Just the idea of it is not that appealing to me. I guess I'm just a boring, monogamous boy. Story 16. I have two. The first was when I banged my high school bully's sister. The strange thing is he knew about it and still tried to bully me in front of my friends. He really did set himself up for embarrassment. The second one was in college. After I broke up with my ex, they went to our mutual friend's house and tried to start a whole bunch of drama. One of the reasons I'm still friends with all of them is because they knew me well enough to call BS on what my ex told them. However, even during all of that, at the end of it, my ex still said, but I gotta say, OP can bang. I've been riding that high for years. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing confessions community so you can support the channel. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Story 17. My current girlfriend and I have been dating since late 2018. Now, I haven't been with too many women, but I've always tried to be attentive and make sure they were satisfied as well as I. So it wasn't just me getting off. When we first started dating, she was very open about what she liked and what felt good. I'm pretty good at picking up cues and was pretty familiar with female anatomy. With my fingers, I managed to find the most sensitive area and got her to finish and squirt at the same time. She was surprised, and I was surprised. Since then, I've managed to keep her extremely satisfied whenever we bang. Our record for squirts in a row was eight times. She needed a break afterward. I've also been able to get the same result with my tongue and my donk. Not at the same time, I'm not a contortionist though not as frequently and not as many times in a row. Story 18. Had a one-night stand with an older lady. Weeks later, with a woman and her bi fiance A few months later, with a random girl other side of town. Few months after that, I saw a family photo in this girl's room. All of them were related. Mom, oldest sister slash fiance, cousin, and younger sister. It wasn't on my frisky bucket list, but it was promptly added and crossed off. Edit. For those thinking this was a Lil Hick town, I'm Hispanic. They were Hispanic, and we live in a major city. Story 19. My first girlfriend was a virgin, and so was I, so we experienced everything together. First time oral, second time penetration, butt stuff, bondage, SM, BDSM, foot job, boob job, you name it. We definitely didn't like everything. And we were not fit enough to really enjoy half of it, to be honest. We hurt ourselves sometimes, and were scared to try out the most hardcore things. But we were scared together and always respected the boundaries the other one set. So my accomplishment was finding such a person who helped me become an open and respecting partner. Story 20. Convinced my girlfriend, now wife, to try butt stuff. She agreed to try it on my birthday as a gift, which gave me a little over two weeks to study. I read everything I could find on how to make women enjoy butt stuff. I'm a butt man. And I knew I was only going to get one chance. And I had to hit a home run. Must have done something right, because we're married now, and do butt stuff several times per week, usually. But the best part is, I overheard my wife talking to her sister about it. My sister-in-law asked, doesn't it hurt? It hurt when I did it. My wife responds, if it hurt, he didn't do it right. Andy and I do it all the time. It doesn't hurt. And I love it. Story 21. In my college, there was a hot girl, probably the hottest in town. She was a good friend, and we went on many dates. I asked her to bang many times, but she plainly refused every time. Years later, we met again as she moved to my city. I was married with a kid, and she was a divorcee with a kid. But still as hot as she was in college. She became a good friend of my wife. She was staying with her orthodox parents and was not getting it for almost three years. 
She started talking to me on the phone and often said how lonely she was. She even wanted to get back to her husband, not to apologize or anything, but only to cure her loneliness occasionally. But the guy was simply not interested. Once when I was alone at my house as my wife was away to her parents with the kid, and my parents had gone to their annual excursion, she came dressed in a sleeveless blouse and transparent sari. I'm an Indian. With a smug smile on her face. From one look at her, I knew that she wanted it and wanted it badly. I asked her in and we went on talking. One thing led to another, and in the end, she said it clearly and threw herself at me. I gently pushed her away and refused. I refused her not because I wanted to get even with her on something. Such things hardly matter. But I didn't want to break the trust of my wife, though there is a little monotony in banging with her. But still, I prefer to not have it outside because somehow I felt I won't be able to face her again. Story 22. Having a fivesome in my bed. I threw a party and there were drugs involved. We were all part of the Florida rave scene and this was after they shut the clubs down and literally bulldozed one. With nowhere to go, we started to hold them at my place every now and then. I walked in my bedroom and found my girlfriend and two of her friends fooling around in my bed. Story 23. I apologized for barging in and went to leave. They told me to stay. A moment later, another one of her friends came in from the door that exited on my patio. It was summer and she was wearing a bikini top and jean shorts. GF says, come on, Alicia, take your top off and join us. She pulled the strings as she walked to the bed. What an awesome night that turned out to be. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one. In the next, people who did favors in school or in the workplace to get ahead, what was it for, and what are things like now? Story one. I was accidentally getting ahead for having fun with my boss once. I was completely unaware until everything ended and suddenly I got laid off. I had a female boss who had a crush on me and I found her really attractive too. I was 20, she was in her early 30s. It was a call center, I did tech support and she was the manager of our team. We flirted a little here and there and nothing really more than I did with the customer service girls. There was only one tech support girl and she had a girlfriend. One day we were doing some team lunch and she asked me to help her go pick up the food. I was just stoked to get out of taking calls. I didn't really notice we left two hours before lunch until later. Hopped in her car and she said she had to get something out of her house before we got the food, so we got there and went inside. I said, what do you need to get here? And she said, laid. And just basically went straight at me. It was great. I really liked her too. I had no clue she had planned this whole thing to get me out of the office into her house. She literally could have just said, hey, we should hang out. I would have done it. I never asked her out because I thought she was out of my league. After that, we met up for a while, keeping it quiet because she was my boss, which was fine with me. I was a dorky 20-year-old, getting some regularly. Then one day we were buzzed and doing the deed, and she started crying. She's sobbing, saying, "I, why am I so terrible that the only way I can get a guy is by being his boss and making him do this with me? I was shocked and I responded with, I'm not doing this because you're my boss. You're super awesome and super hot. She was a short girl with an hourglass figure. A little thick, but in all the right places. You're not making me do anything. I liked you for months before any of this started. The only reason I never asked you out was, I didn't want to make it awkward at work. She then started listing all the stuff she does at work to keep me close. Make me like her. And make my life better. I found out I was making more than anyone on my team by a decent margin. I got the best desk that other people apparently were jealous of. I didn't care. I was on a few layoff lists, and she made sure to get my name off them. Somebody complained about me to her a lot because I said that stupid to them when they said something stupid, and she trashed the complaints. I told her, stop doing that. I still like you, and you don't have to do any of that at work. Screw if I lost my job. I'd find a new one, and I'd probably be happy because we wouldn't have to sneak around. The thing is, I think she was attracted to me because of all the stuff she did. I think she felt like she was in control of me. And when she found out I didn't actually care about that stuff or feel like I was in debt to her, she ended it. And the next time layoffs happened, I was gone. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing confessions community so you can support the channel. Story two, I worked in a warehouse 10 years ago. I had the most physical job there, constantly slagging around 130 pound products by hand, so I was reasonably jacked after about four months there. 
My job was automated at every other warehouse we owned, but the office manager seemed to like licking me, and I beat the robots in efficiency and accuracy, so she kept me around. She asked for my help moving some heavy stuff one day in her office at the end of the day, and I didn't think anything of it. My shoulder was really sore that day, and she noticed me favoring it. So when I was done, she told me she used to work as a massage therapist and offered to help my shoulder. Literally thought nothing of it until three minutes into the massage, her hands were no longer on my shoulder. She was reasonably attractive, and everyone else had left for the day, so I took advantage of the situation and went straight to it. Three days later, I got a three-an-hour raise. The company was four months into a pay freeze. For justification, I was beating the robots. We did the deed a few times a week, and I got an extra few days off a month. Paid, because she was concerned about my shoulder. The guy didn't just beat the robots. He cracked the secret code of employment. Gotta love a good performance-based raise. Wank, wank. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button. And give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Story 3 When I was in college, I worked in a little family-owned restaurant. The owner's wife was the manager, and while she came on to me, we started getting together regularly. It was great because I got a call out whenever I wanted, leave early whenever I wanted, and got all the good tables, good shifts, free food, and unlimited smoke breaks. But all my co-workers hated me. I know I'm a piece of crap. I was young and stupid, and she was attractive. And since she was married, I knew we weren't going to be together. So when I met someone my own age at school and started dating her, she got really crazy, and I ended up getting fired for, I can't even remember now. I was fired for some stupid reason, but it was really because she couldn't bear to see me anymore if I didn't want her. She would text and call me for months afterward and even showed up in my apartment a few times and also lied saying I got her pregnant when she wasn't. She showed up at my new job, started a huge scene, and almost got me fired my first week. So overall, four out of ten. Wouldn't recommend. Story four. Senior year of high school, our Spanish class took a two-week trip to Mexico. One week was learning, and the other was in Acapulco learning. Our teacher was mid-twenties, and one night, me and several students snuck out to the club. I went to the bathroom and saw her coming out. Both of us hammered. I said, if you don't tell, I won't tell. Thinking only of saving myself, she started crying. Life was over, etc. Now that I'm older, I realize she was a really emotional drunk. Anyway, we went out back so she could calm down. Somehow, she ended up coming on to me, and at that point, all thoughts went out the window, with a dumpster of essentially a Pedro Hornies. That was the second of five nights there, and then three more times. Last night, she had a realization that we can't do this. I said I know, and it wouldn't cause trouble. We had our fun, both were consenting adults. She was also a very generous lover. Like, not to get detailed, but that was the best I was ever taken care of. She was a good person because when we got off the flight, she ran up and hugged her fiancé like nothing. The rest of that year, no matter what assignment I turned in, I got 100%. I wasn't going to argue. Ran into her a few years after college, and she told me I still held the record for the worst written Spanish paper in her class. I Google translated the whole thing out of laziness, but I got 100% on it. She tried to rekindle a couple of times. I never obliged. She's one of those grasses always greener, lives in the past types. Story 5. So, I'm one of about four girls working in a mostly male workspace. This isn't my story, but I'm roommates with a girl who went through and is currently going through this. This started about two years ago. Right off the bat, everyone knew something was up. Barely an adult, no experience in a workplace, but got one of the better jobs here. And she stayed there. Her raises are based mainly on how well you can do your job and how many different positions you can work on her line. But somehow, even though she could only do one job and wasn't particularly good at it, she kept getting raises out of nowhere. No one else could prove anything, but we all kind of figured she was messing around with our supervisor, who was married and twice her age. Neither of them admitted to it, but the raises kept coming. Her performance stayed pretty crap, and she basically got away with anything as far as attendance and accountability went. Everyone else treated her like crap and tried to get her to quit. Fast forward to about eight months ago when B's relationship with her boss went south. They broke up and he's been trying to get her fired for about anything and everything he can think of. And the catch is that she has documented proof of their relationship, which he's planning on sending to his wife as well as our boss's bosses if he really does manage to get her fired. So now she's basically got an ironclad position where we work and is making considerably above skill level money-wise. I'd say it worked out fairly well for her. While I don't agree with her personal choices, this girl is my friend. 
should she have slept with her boss, man? No. Does that make her a bad person? Also, no. It takes two to tango. I don't think it's fair for either of them to lose their livelihoods over this. While mistakes were made in both parts, neither of them has mistreated the rest of us. It's just a slimy situation all around, and I hope they both move past it. To clarify, this is not a corporate or office job. We work in a slaughterhouse. It's basically a factory job, which is one of the less crappy tasks to perform. It's not like she gunned anyone else out of a job. Literally, all you need to work here is a high school diploma and no violent criminal background. She better be making a fortune to endure that misery. Story six. In the late 90s, I got hired to be a phone agent for a distribution and import company. The job was to take incoming orders. It paid 22 grand a year. Within the first week, I began giving the owner special favors on the regular. He was married. I was a young gay male. I was there less than a month before the marketing director announced her pregnancy, an intent to quit when the baby came to be a stay-at-home mom. The owner promoted me to her assistant to learn the job and gave me a raise to 35 grand. And when the marketing director left seven months later, I got her job and a raise of 50 grand. I continued to give my boss favors once or twice a week for five years, and by the time I resigned, I was earning 70 grand. What are things like now? Now I'm married to a dude. I went back to college during my PhD, and I spent all day reading, writing, and getting that zaza. Story seven, way, way back when I was starting my IT career and went for an interview as support admin. Fancy word for help desk agent for a big ISP at the time. The manager was quite a striking woman in her 40s with long blonde hair, blue eyes, big knockers, and wore one of those tight blazer and skirt outfits that you commonly see reproduced ad nauseum in big companies. She started by doing a very professional interview, asked a ton of questions about my background, the almost non-existent professional one at the time, and cleared me on how much of a responsibility my position would be, how I'd be the face of the company, blah, 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 all those shenanigans that make me yawn nowadays every time someone is throwing those lines at some poor new hire. Then it got definitely interesting. He started asking a bunch of standard questions about myself, like if I had a car, was flexible with schedules, working night shifts now and then, and if I was married. After I told her that I had a girlfriend and we were living with our parents until we had enough cash to buy an apartment and move in together, she asked me if I was willing to do some extra work to improve my pay and advance my career. And while doing this, she literally stood up and sat on the edge of a second desk placed on the side of her office and showed me more. She explained that she'd helped numerous new hires before me this way, that if I had a bit of a brain and kept quiet, I could have gone very far and high up in the chain in very little time. She tried to rekindle a couple of times. I never obliged. She's one of those grass is always greener, lives in the past types. Story five. So I'm one of about four girls working in a mostly male workspace. This isn't my story, but I'm roommates with a girl who went through and is currently going through this. This started about two years ago. Right off the bat, everyone knew something was up. Barely an adult, no experience in a workplace, but got one of the better jobs here, and she stayed there. Her raises are based mainly on how well you can do your job and how many different positions you can work on her line. But somehow, even though she could only do one job and wasn't particularly good at it, she kept getting raises out of nowhere. No one else could prove anything, but we all kind of figured she was messing around with our supervisor, who was married and twice her age. Neither of them admitted to it, but the raises kept coming. Her performance stayed pretty crap, and she basically got away with anything as far as attendance and accountability went. Everyone else treated her like crap and tried to get her to quit. Fast forward to about eight months ago when B's relationship with her boss went south. They broke up and he's been trying to get her fired for about anything and everything he can think of. The catch is that she has documented proof of their relationship, which he's planning on sending to his wife as well as our boss's bosses if he really does manage to get her fired. So now she's basically got an ironclad position where we work and is making considerably above skill level money-wise. I'd say it worked out fairly well for her. While I don't agree with her personal choices, this girl is my friend. Should she have slept with her boss man? No. Does that make her a bad person? Also no. It takes two to tango. I don't think it's fair for either of them to lose their livelihoods over this. While mistakes were made in both parts, neither of them has mistreated the rest of us. It's just a slimy situation all around, and I hope they both move past it. To clarify, this is not a corporate or office job. We work in a slaughterhouse. It's basically a factory job, which is one of the less crappy tasks to perform. It's not like she gunned anyone else out of a job. Literally, all you need to work here is a high school diploma 
and no violent criminal background. She better be making a fortune to endure that misery. Story 6. In the late 90s, I got hired to be a phone agent for a distribution and import company. The job was to take incoming orders. It paid 22 grand a year. Within the first week, I began giving the owner special favors on the regular. He was married. I was a young gay male. I was there less than a month before the marketing director announced her pregnancy and intent to quit when the baby came to be a stay-at-home mom. The owner promoted me to her assistant to learn the job and gave me a raise to 35 grand. And when the marketing director left seven months later, I got her job and a raise of 50 grand. I continued to give my boss favors once or twice a week for five years. And by the time I resigned, I was earning 70 grand. What are things like now? Now I'm married to a dude. I went back to college during my PhD and I spent all day reading, writing, and getting that zaza. Story seven, way, way back when I was starting my IT career and went for an interview as support admin. Fancy word for help desk agent for a big ISP at the time. The manager was quite a striking woman in her 40s with long blonde hair, blue eyes, big knockers, and wore one of those tight blazer and skirt outfits that you commonly see reproduced ad nauseam in big companies. She started by doing a very professional interview, asked a ton of questions about my background, the almost non-existent professional one at the time, and cleared me on how much of a responsibility my position would be, how I'd be the face of the company, blah, 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 all those shenanigans that make me yawn nowadays every time someone is throwing those lines at some poor new hire. Then it got definitely interesting. And he started asking a bunch of standard questions about myself, like if I had a car, was flexible with schedules, working night shifts now and then, and if I was married. After I told her that I had a girlfriend and we were living with our parents until we had enough cash to buy an apartment and move in together, she asked me if I was willing to do some extra work to improve my pay and advance my career. And while doing this, she literally stood up and sat on the edge of a second desk placed on the side of her office and showed me more. She explained that she'd helped numerous new hires before me this way, that if I had a bit of a brain and kept quiet, I could have gone very far and high up in the chain in very little time. Now I must confess that I'm not exactly a saint, and I like to indulge myself in the numerous gifts that life provides us with. But for some stupid reason, and despite the fact that I was getting a chubby and screaming for me to dive headlong straight to her, I kind of stood up, and all I could say was, uh, no thank you. No, I still remember the look on her face. Totally matter of fact about it, she just said that it was a shame, but okay, my loss, and we left it at that. Went home, took care of my urges, and got myself thinking if I should tell my girlfriend about it. I told her eventually, and she believed me. She worked for another company in the same field, and there were rumors about some of the people hired over there. The best thing was, she knew I was telling the truth because I didn't get hired. Story eight. I was in my first year of pre-med and doing fairly well. I had a biology professor that I found extremely attractive, even though she was 33 years older than me. On St. Patrick's Day, we were in the lab doing some cell culturing. And as anyone who has done this knows, there is some substantial wait time involved. This was a five-hour lab. We started a cell culture and finished up with our notes, but didn't have to be back in the lab for about two and a half hours to do the rest of the lab. So my lab partner and I decided to go to the campus bar. While I drank two pitchers of green booze and headed back to the lab, I walked in a little tipsy. I'm six at five and 240 pounds, and I saw the professor reading a book over her lab table. I walked up to her and started flirting. My lab partner tried to pull me away. I guess worried she would be upset we were drinking or something. She starts flirting back. So I ask her if after the lab she wants to come back to the campus bar with us and have some drinks. She says she can't be seen in the campus bar with us, but offers to take me to some other bar nearby. We went to the bar and she bought us a few drinks and then we kept back to her place. Got frisky. I woke up the next morning to people eating breakfast. Her family decided to come over to visit, I guess. Went into the dining room and sat down. People were extremely confused about who the hell I was until she walked into the room and kissed me. Everyone looked really awkward, but meh, what do I care? This continued on for a while, and I received an A-plus in the course. Went back to looking at my work and should have received a B-plus or A-minus. I went harder critiquing his own grades than on the professor. Story 9. When I was in my early 20s, I worked at a store that put my old store out of business. Lame, but I enjoyed the store type. I was hired in as just a normal employee, but after years of managing a store, it felt off. The current manager of the store said he would bump me to assistant and then help me get one of the newer stores opening if we got together after hours. I didn't care either way, but hell, why not? 
I didn't think after hours meant the back room or over a display, but I figured might as well. The next day I go in and the area manager is there, but the manager is not. Apparently they actually reviewed the cameras for that night just by chance and saw me getting it over a display. I told them the truth that I was promised a promotion. They had me write a statement, fired the manager, asked me to resign, and then banned me from any future employment with the store, all with a promise that I would drop the issue and they will still give employment referrals. I was able to recover quickly and find new employment. That company's still around. Not sure about what happened to the guy beyond getting fired. Uh, story 10. I was a junior IT worker at a hospital. I had worked there for a few summers back in the day in the IT office as spade intern through my high school. I really liked the place, and I made a lot of professional connections. I had two supervisors as my workplace was consolidating all of their IT offices into one. My male boss was in charge of servers in certain departments. My female boss was in charge of desktop and staff services like training and purchasing of software. She'll be known as May. May had great legs. She would often catch me looking, but never said anything. I was young at the time. She was 40-ish. She had a ticket system where every week, whoever closed out the tickets with great staff feedback would get some type of prize from a coffee cup of candy to 15 gift cards from various local stores. At the end of the fiscal year, she would do a tally and give out the end of the year bonus prizes. I won a few years in a row. I would give some of the prizes to the other staff, but kept the candy for home and such. We did a weekend retreat in Florida with two other departments in the year I turned 19. I was a young parent at the time, so I was trying to save as much money as possible. So when the company gave us a 100 spending card for food and nights out, I kept it and went to my room to play games on my laptop and or use the gym and pool they had on site. The floors we were on were ghost towns. May did not go out either. She preferred reading books and working out. I ordered food from the cart and I heard the cart coming down the hallway. I opened my door and May was there doing the same. She asked me to eat with her and I did. We talked about life and work. After washing up and making jokes, we started to get down to business. She had a single, but I was sharing. I had to stay the night and sneak back in. When we got back to the office, I thought this was a one-time thing. And let's not think it can be more than that. I had a lot going on. She began to email me and ask me out on dates, but the dates she was available were bad for me. She confronted me after work one day and wanted to know what was up or if I was an into her. I told her about being a parent and I needed to save, but I would be down with going to her place to watch a movie or something. We began to do that and more. When I would leave, she would give me a gift. At first, it was cash for my kid. Then it became a credit card. One year alone, she had given me a total of $22,000 in cash and gifts. I sold a lot of stuff she gave me because I lived in a bad hood and that stuff was going to get me. She came to visit me once when I had a weekend sitter for my kid and did a good fella moment when Henry got out of the slammer and saw where his wife was living. In the fourth year, she got me an apartment two blocks from her and paid for the first six months. Helped me get my kid into a grade school, got me suits, manicures, pedicures, and haircuts. We did stuff together for about eight years. I got promoted a few times to finally becoming IT director. She moved to California to be closer to her parents as they became older around the eighth year. She flew me out a few times and introduced me as her boyfriend to her parents for a few years after. She and I are great friends now, and she has helped me get solid finance education for my future and my kids. Whenever she's in town, we go to dinner and maybe a play. She's still very attractive and very fit. Story 11. We ran into my boss at a bar. P.S. They're hit and miss. He tried to dick away, but me and my husband are forward. We ran over and said hello to him and his wife, joked a bit, that fancy seeing you here stuff, etc. My husband gave me the nod, so I got flirty. We went back to his house, husband and his wife in tow. Don't worry. Anyway, it wasn't to get ahead intentionally. I think it's cute. It's keeping in shape for 45, which some dudes just say, screw it all. I'd thought about it before. This was my first real gig, and the whole action with my boss thing was attractive. My husband already said I could do it whenever, if he was up for it. I had chickened out a few times before this to try, though. Didn't know how it would go. Didn't know he was in an open relationship. Anyway, it turns out he likes stuff on him. My husband ain't about that, but his wife strapped up, and we were in a conga line set up. It was fun. We talked over lunch on Monday that it can't happen again. It never happened, and we can never talk about it. Until the holiday party, three weeks later, when we all went back to our place this time. It's been a few years on and off. Sometimes we sneak away at lunch, and sometimes we get together on the weekend. Hubby and his wife fitted off well, too. I genuinely had to hide under his desk one time when someone came in, like in the movies. 
Fortunately, it was only a few minutes. I'd like to say it didn't affect any decisions, and I don't take advantage of it all, but I think he definitely has my back more now, no pun intended. Been promoted, given more training opportunities, etc., compared to others. At the same time, I asked for more training, more opportunities, and the promotion was within my timeline, but it did get picked over Becca. But Becca's a brat who ruins everyone's day anyway. I guess I did get special treatment because I did get Becca moved so she wasn't near me anymore. Teamwork, initiative, closing the sale, all legit. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one. What's the dumbest way you've managed to get some action? Story one. Oh, I've got a handful of these, some that involve doing dumb things and some that were dumb luck. First was the time my job sent a bunch of young people to Chicago to work for a week. Me and three female co-workers. There are two dumb luck ones in this trip as well. The first was meeting a gaster customer where we were working and asking about a large bandage she had in her hip. She said it was to cover a fresh tattoo. I made a joke about her youthful appearance and asked her if her parents had to sign a waiver because she didn't look old enough. She left and came back with her ID to prove her age to me and said she was old enough for a tattoo and to do other adult things. I played dumb and asked what she meant. She asked when I got off work and where I was staying, and then she showed me what she meant. Nine out of ten night, five out of ten difficulty. And I was originally just trying to make conversation. A few days later, one of the co-workers I'm traveling with texts me in the middle of the night and asks me to come down the hall to her room. Her room shared a wall with another one of our co-workers, her best friend, and she was being very noisy with the guys she met at the hotel. So we listen a bit and laugh a bit, have a drink, and then her face goes completely serious. I can't listen to her anymore. Let's drown her out. Let's be louder. Eight out of 10 night. Uh, negative two out of 10 difficulty. What even? Then as far as dumb stuff I did, I think probably leaving a bar, then texting the bartender that I was locked out of my apartment so she'd invite me over, which worked for some reason. Then when I get to her house, she tells me to sleep on the couch because her dog sleeps on the bed next to her. So I get to work becoming besties with the dog. And at one point, I'm on all fours playing tug of war with the dog's rope chew toy. She gets up from the couch and says, come on, boy, let's go to bed. And both of us, the pupper and I, look up at her. She points at me and says, I'm talking to you. Ten difficulty, ten out of ten puppy playtime. I like how he rated not only the deed, but also how he rated the playtime even higher. Story two. I was at a party and truth or dare started. My first dare was to show off, no big deal. He got back to the guy who dared me and told him to show his. He wouldn't do it, and he got kicked from the game. All pissy about it, too. So then he got back to me again, and this time it was to run across campus in my tennis shoes. Only my tennis shoes. He told me I didn't have to do it, but half buzzed me it was determined. So we designated a pickup spot on the other side of campus. I put my clothes in the van that was coming to get me, and off I go. It's around 11 or so at night, though there aren't many people on campus. But I still hear a few catcalls and whistles as I'm running. One person tried to chase me. But I ran cross country in high school, so I left him behind quickly. And I should mention that it's like 35 degrees outside. So I get to the pickup point near a bus stop, and at one of the classroom buildings, there is a person in a long trench coat sitting at the bus stop. So the van shows. I walk towards it. And the guy who I got kicked earlier leans out the window and says, enjoy your walk, bitch, and drives away. And I'm standing there in the middle of the road and turn around and look at the guy at the bus stop. He says, nice night for a walk, huh? Long story short, he and I show up back at the house with his long trench coat on and the van is locked. The idiot won't unlock it either. So my new friend breaks a window and I get my stuff and we run into the night. I went with him back to his dorm room. This is on a Friday night. I didn't leave his room until Sunday. We dated for about six months. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing confessions community so you can support the channel. Story three. This isn't the dumbest way I got what I wanted, but how oblivious I was. I was 18 and she was 24. So I met this chick working at a warehouse. She was the only girl around my age and all the guys wanted to hit on her. But she had a, I'm here just for work attitude. So I didn't bother even being friendly. So she didn't think I was like the other guys. Long story short, we ended up becoming friends. We would have a break together and walk to our cars together, still treating her like a normal coworker. Come to find out later on, she was a lesbian, not too surprised. She ended up quitting a few months after working there, and so did I, since it was a crappy job. Anyway, a few months go by and she finds me on Instagram. She DMs me and tells me she wants to hang out. 
I agree, and we meet up for breakfast. She proceeded to tell me she was joining the Navy, told her I was happy for her and wished her the best. She told me she doesn't have many friends here in the city and that she was hoping I'd hang out with her before going to boot camp. They said, sure, coolest chick, and well, it was a good time. Talking to her more found out she wasn't fully lesbian. She just stopped meeting up with guys years ago. I was in shock since she didn't give any other guys the time of the day, but didn't think much of it. Sins in my brain had already labeled her as lesbian, so no hints were picked up in my dumb brain. We spent the last few days hanging out, hiking, and having fun. About her last three days in the city, we met up to eat and do errands she still had to do. I went with her because I didn't have anything else to do. We ended up having a few drinks that were not my favorite, but had to, so I didn't offend her by not drinking them. She asked me if I could take her to a place we had gone to see the scenery of the city. But as we were leaving the apartment, she was insisting we go swimming. I didn't have extra clothes, but soaking my feet would be nice. When we get to the pool area, she starts getting ready. Not once did I check her out since she dressed like a tomboy, but she was hiding her beauty that took me away. We talked a little and then head back to the apartment because she wanted to shower. Now she was acting strange, going back and forth before getting in the shower. She went in with the door open, but it didn't turn around in my head. I didn't want her to think I was hanging out with her just for that. I truly liked her company as a friend and the stories she would tell me, so I was trying to make her feel comfortable and not worry that I would pull some stuff. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. She gets out of the shower, dressed, and we continue drinking the drinks we left. I still had my second bottle to finish, and she still had her fourth. She gets up to her next bottle and opens the fridge door with a straight question. So, you want to do it, or what? My mind went blank and had about two seconds to respond. One second to try and make sure I heard her right, and the other second to come up with an answer. I started stuttering, and my brain came to the conclusion that she thought I was there to fool around, and she wasn't. And so I said, no, I'm just enjoying your company. I know it's pretty stupid. After a few seconds, I asked her what she said since I still didn't know if I heard her right. She then told me again, jokingly said, well, if you want to waste a few minutes of your life with me, then yes. She then gets up as if he overslept and had to head to work, but we were heading to her bed. She grabs my hand like girls did to us guys as kids to take us somewhere, while the rest is obvious. The whole time I was in shock that it was happening. To begin. I'm not attractive, nor the tallest. I'm taller than her, or the fittest. She then left, and it never happened again. But we still stayed friends. Been a while since I heard from her, but I hope she's doing well. Story 4. Two times related to a job I had in college. I worked for a grocery store when I was 19, and one of the worst tasks was closing down where we had to front all the products. For those who have never worked in a grocery store, that's basically where you're pulling all the products on the shelves to the front. It's as simple as it sounds, just annoying and tedious. Anyway, there was a closing manager who would almost never bother me while doing that, so sometimes when done, I would sneak into the dairy cooler. That was my primary working section midday. One of my coworkers noticed and followed me there to get away. But after a few minutes talking, I realized that was not what she was there for. We made out for a little bit before going back to my dorm. The second occurrence was when my coworker, who became one of my best friends and I, were stalking the section and complaining about the clean shave policy. Being that we were young, we had finally gotten some actual thick facial hair and were having to shave it for the job. This woman, who was at least 20 years my senior and fine as hell, taps me in the back. I turned around and she got a good look at me and says, I can help you fix that. She gives me her number and says, call me after your shift and we'll talk about ways to help it grow back faster. So I did. She gave me her address. Story five, uh, she needed a place to sleep, and my roommate was an excellent problem solver. My roommate has extra room in his bed. My roommate's girlfriend and her friend came out for a long weekend. If I'm remembering correctly, I was already in bed when they arrived the first night. They had some drinks, then went about figuring out sleeping arrangements. I guess she preferred a bed to the couch, and my roommate had this brilliant idea. He marched her upstairs and marched into my room saying, hey, she can sleep in here with you, right? He then walked off, leaving her at my door. Now, what should have been a really awkward moment wasn't all that bad. She seemed sheepish at first, but I think it was mostly not wanting to impose. We'd met a couple of times prior, so she knew I wasn't a creep, but we didn't really know each other. I think she was also impressionable, as am I. So we were both kind of like, sure, okay, no big deal. I can be all right with this. Nothing happened that night. 
We just slept and neither of us made it weird. I can't remember the following day, but I know nothing new happened. No flirting or jokes about sharing a bed or anything. We both, as far as I know, went to bed figuring it would be just as platonic as the night before. We turned the lights out and settled in. That's when she started to snuggle. I accommodated and snuggled back. For a good 20 to 30 minutes, we both just cuddled under the guise of getting comfortable. I guess it finally got too hot for her and she went in for a kiss. Then we were off to the races. It still blows my mind when I think about it. She just happened to be in my bed. There was no let up, no flirting, much less a date, not even a wink to be met with a grin. Just the body language of two people in bed in a dark room. It fizzled out with her not too long after, but I'm still good friends with a roommate. Don't cut ties with a wingman who can successfully vouch for you while you're asleep. Story six. I met a girl, asked her out to dinner. She agreed. A few nights later, we're out. As we're concluding dinner, I tell her the dessert at this restaurant sucks, but I have some better dessert at my place. I was being sincere as I had some homemade dessert a coworker so had made me recently and was delicious. Still, some of the best fudge brownies I've ever had. And I had some vanilla ice cream to pair it with. We go back and she asks to use the bathroom. I go to the kitchen to prep dessert. I soon heard her call my name from the bedroom. The room was connected to the bathroom by the closet, which I found odd. I walk in. The girl is in her birthday suit in a position of preparedness, for lack of a better term, and I'm standing there dumbfounded with a big bowl full of brownies and ice cream with two spoons. The night was great. The brownies afterward were amazing. By far one of my more eventful evenings. I got a lot of questions about whether or not the ice cream melted, the answer to that being mostly. Fortunately, I have a rule about not overloading my brownie with ice cream, so there was room to top off for the post-exercise reward and still have a delicious treat. Personally, everyone won in this situation. She and I never really went anywhere relationship-wise, but I still cherish it as quite the funny moment. Story 7. I went out with two of my younger roommates who were in college. We headed to a well-known dive bar in Brooklyn and eventually stopped to talk to two women. I took a liking to a woman named Gianna immediately. Her friend Rachel seemed less interested in the group dynamic and my roommates were being obnoxious. Anyway, a few drinks pass and we all squeeze into the back seat of a cab together. We get back to our place and find my friend Doug, who was staying with us for a day, sleeping on the couch. We quietly walk to the kitchen, get some booze from the fridge, and chat. It's going really well with Gianna. But Rachel is completely repulsed by my now extremely boozed roommates. One of them drops an empty bottle, and my friend Doug wakes up from the noise. He sits up, and we say hi, and laugh, and apologize. Rachel sits down next to him, and they begin talking. Her roommates stumble around and eventually go to their rooms, disappointed. So Rachel and Doug talk, and eventually she convinces him to come over to her apartment. He has a 9 a.m. flight, but he decides to go. They hook up, he leaves, comes back to our place around 5 a.m., grabs his stuff, and goes to the airport. This dude was sleeping on the couch, and a woman came over and decided she liked him more than the other two guys in her group. He didn't talk about any games, didn't drink anything, just talked after waking up from his nap and got what he wanted within four hours. Incredible. Story eight. Thought I missed my shot because a hotter guy came along. Was completely wrong and ended up having friends with benefits for over a year and a half. I was out having some lunchtime drinks with a few friends, and one of them casually mentioned that the other had just broken up with her boyfriend. My interest peaked, and I think she noticed because for the rest of the time, we were flirting hard. They suggested that me and my flatmate come out with him that evening, and we agreed. Cut to us being out at a local bar. We're still flirting, and then a bunch of her friends turn up, and a real tall, quite attractive guy starts putting the moves on her, and maybe a 6 out of 10 guy sitting at 5'8", so I figure I should go for the other guy, so I give up. Just keep drinking and having a good time. We moved to a club nearby, and I went to grab some drinks for me, her and my other friend. They come back, hand out the drinks, and notice the guy's gone. Within a minute, we're getting hot and bothered, and within half an hour, we're heading back to mine and have some pretty great rebound action. I cut to the morning, and we're chatting, and I ask her what happened with the other guy, and she says she wasn't interested in him, which made me feel pretty good about myself as a decidedly average dude. And when she leaves, she suggests that it could happen again if I was down, and I obviously agree. Uh, we're still really good friends to this day, made me way more confident in myself, and taught me that you always gotta shoot your shot. Story 9. A girl who lived in the dorms asked me for some help with putting together a paper for one of her classes. She already had it written. I just typed it up on my computer for her so it would be presentable. It took me some time to do it, during which she just lay in my bed. 
When I had finished, she didn't feel like going back to her room and asked if she could stay in mine. We lived in different dorm buildings. We spent most of the night curled up with each other. At some point, I felt her take my hand. I had an arm around her. It was more comfortable for me that way and place it on her. Pulled it away, but a few minutes later, she puts it there again. It ended with us getting frisky, and I had mixed feelings about it. We weren't protected. I already knew she was seeing someone else. He lived next door to me and was literally on the opposite side of the wall where my bed was. Stupid, inexperienced me, didn't plan ahead. I found out from a mutual friend after the fact that she was pregnant at the time that happened. I literally breathed a sigh of relief at the last part. He had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Story 10. I was once out and drinking. I walked past a park where there were homeless people drinking. I sat down with them and started sharing my booze with them. About 30 minutes later, two European tourists walked past with big backpacks on and asked us if they knew any hotels that were still open, as they had missed their check-in time. I simply said, oh, you can just come back to my place tonight. Both the girls gladly accepted, so we got into a taxi. We drove out to my place with a taxi driver, constantly joking that he'd like to join in. He never did. Fast forward, we're back at my place, and one of the girls brings out a bottle and some iced tea. We start drinking. I'm still oblivious to the fact of what is happening. Suddenly, one of the girls starts coming on to me. I get ready, and we start going for it right then in front of her friend, who then joins in. The next morning, I take them to their hotel. I'm hung over like a dog and still in denial of what we did the night before. As we go to the hotel, the front desk clerk says, I thought this booking was for two. One of the girls assures them that it is with a wink. We went into their hotel room. The original girl that hit on me lays in the bed as her friend goes to have a shower and asks me if I want to do it again before I leave. I accept before I say my goodbyes. Pretty wild night. Story 11. I was 23. I had invited an old high school friend over to catch up, hang out, hit the bar with, in an effort to keep an amazing and long conversation going. I switched to soda so I didn't get over at the top drunk and lose the conversation. We laughed, we got deep, and we even taught each other our favorite hobbies we had picked up over the years. It's now 4 a.m., and we've been chatting about everything, and I finally say that I'm tired and we should probably head to bed. I grabbed a bag and put it in my room and grabbed a blanket to head over to the couch. She asked if I wanted to sleep in my bed and then insisted that she could take my bed. Then she asks again over a text now that I'm laying on the couch. You sure you don't want to come sleep on your bed? I replied, no, I promise you're totally okay. I don't mind the couch. To which she walks out in her birthday suit and says, just come here and do it with me already. And so we did. And at the time I was emotionally reckless and tried giving her a kiss when she left the next morning and she said, um, no, I just wanted the action, bro. I don't want a boyfriend. I just got rid of one. Big yikes in that part. The takeaway from this is our generation will choose a little dreamy over oxygen when slobbing on a knob, but a kiss is where it's weird and the line gets drawn. Story 12. So I picked up my dog from Petco after getting him groomed and ran inside to pay my bill and pick up some dog treats. The girl at the register was clearly having a bad day. We chatted up a bit and she explained she just got dumped by a guy over a tattoo. I told her that I was having a bad day too. And if she wanted to give me a call after she's off, I'll buy her a drink. Later that evening, she sent me a text asking if I wanted to see the tattoo she got dumped over. I said yes. She then sent me a picture of a pair of wolf paws tattooed on her chest. I just responded, nice. And she then asked if I wanted to see them in person. I just sent her my address, and about 20 minutes later, I had some very awesome rebound action. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one. People of Reddit. What was the most forbidden dirty you've had? Number one. In high school, I went on vacation with my girlfriend's family and some of their friends. Ten people in total in a medium-sized Winnebago. Driving through some Midwestern states. Most of the people were either napping, driving, or navigating. The main master bed in the back of the open layout, bagelized big sister, me, girlfriend, and little sister in a row on the bed. Girlfriend and I start getting frisky under the sheets, and all of a sudden, we both have our pants down and are going at it right by both of our sisters. And the whole time, I'm looking at the rearview mirror out of her dad's eyes, praying that we don't move too much. She was pretty loud and always had a certain smell that emanated through the area, so it was pretty risky. Number two. When I was 19, 
I attended the funeral of my great aunt. My mom very awkwardly asked me to speak at the funeral, which was both surprising and unsurprising. Surprising because I had a minimal relationship with my great aunt, and unsurprising because I have a reputation for good toasts and public speaking. So I hastily compiled a few stories, anecdotes, and nice words, and rehearsed as much as I could. I was only given two days' advance notice for a lesson I wouldn't have preferred, so I'm doing my best to prepare, and the day arrives. It quickly becomes clear that I'm not offering remarks. I'm delivering the lone eulogy. I would later find out that her son felt too brokenhearted to speak, and no one else in the family, her nieces and nephews, her daughter-in-law, her brother, my grandfather, was willing to step up. It was a very small perfunctory ceremony in a funeral home, maybe about two dozen people. The funeral director begins the remarks, gives the vital stats, and introduces me. Buoyed by a shot from the flask I asked my older brother to bring, I take the stage and set about memorializing the great aunts who doted on us when we were young kids, but who I never got to know as a person. I'm stretching, filling time with an ad-lib story about how excited she was at her son's recent wedding when I saw the girl. She was about five a five tall, shortish, dark brown hair, cut in a bob framing her face and wearing a tasteful navy blue dress that looked more like what a young professional wears to the office than funeral attire. But it had a small keyhole cut out with a peak of her chest. My eyes landed on her just as she dabbed a tear with a handkerchief. Our eyes met and she gave me a weak smile which emboldened me as I continued to speak. I felt my voice grow a little bolder and I finished the eulogy to considerable tears and a smattering of applause. After the ceremony, many people came up to me to thank me for the eulogy, including the girl in the blue dress. She introduced herself as Brandy, gave me a deep hug and kissed me on the cheek. She told me my Aunt Sarah had been her piano instructor and they had lost touch, but she still thought of my great aunt whenever she played. The funeral was a little unusual as we were going to have the reception first, and then the graveside ceremony afterward. So we go to this hall for a luncheon and I sit at the table with my cousins. Brandy walks in and makes a beeline for our table. She asks if it's okay if she sits with us, as it's the dedicated young person's table. No one has a problem, so she sits at the table. Throughout the dinner, she's laughing at my jokes and stories, but I don't notice anything else. After a while, I get up to go to the restroom, and as I'm leaving, she waves to me from the end of the hall. I walk over, and she indicates a large coat closet or room and asks if I wouldn't mind helping her with something. I agree, and she opens the door and pushes me into the closet, shutting the door behind me. I want you to kiss me, she says. I give her a weird look, because I'm 19 and gawky and awkward, and this seems far-fetched, so she says, I know that's forward and it's a lot, but I feel like when you were speaking, I saw your heart, and it was beautiful, and I want to kiss you and feel your heart. I'm sorry that's so weird. I'm going to leave now and regret this maybe my whole life. I quickly assure her that it was not weird, even though it was, and I thank her for what she said. She steps forward, and I wrap my arms around her back, and we kiss. It's a little awkward, but still nice, and we share a few more kisses, each smoother and less clumsy than the last, as we get used to each other. We should probably get back, she says after an awkward pause. But thank you, I needed to feel something. And then she trailed off. We go back to the table at separate times and pick up where we left off, conversationally. She's still laughing hard at all my jokes, and her glances are getting more daring and suggestive. I'm trying to muster up the courage to make sure I get her number or Facebook or whatever, which in retrospect is sad. The luncheon goes on for another hour, and things begin to wrap up. I'm out in the front of the venue smoking a cigarette when she comes up to me again. Hi, she says brightly. Listen, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm having a lot of feelings and it's never like this, but listen. And she kind of paused. Would you want to hook up with me? She blushes deep, deep red, and looks like she's ready to run away. Partly because I want to save her the embarrassment, but mostly because I wanted to, I said. Sure, um, yeah, I couldn't figure out a way to downplay my enthusiasm. Okay, she says. Well then, um, I'm already checked out of my hotel. Can we go to your place? Shame, regret, and insecurity washed over me as I had to quickly explain I was staying with my mom. 
She had driven me and there was no way I could arrange a one-night stand at her home that started at a funeral. Her face sunk. She grew red again and she said, Forget it. I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. I just need to go home. Luckily, at that point, my parents came out and I had an excuse to wave goodbye and get out of the situation, holding my suit jacket just so I could walk off my boner. After a time, we were at the gravesite and my brothers, dad, and uncles acted as pallbearers. I was surprised to see Brandy at the gravesite, but there she was. I tried to ignore her, and she was trying to ignore me. I was almost immediately distracted, however, as my grandfather had put everyone in a frenzy. The large, framed portrait of my aunt that had sat in the casket had gone missing. We ragged our brains and tried to remember whose car it had ended up in. Playing a hunch, I saw that the hearse we'd brought Aunt Sarah in was now parked back at the entrance building where all the mausoleums were. I headed up there and peeked through the windows, and sure enough, at the front of the bay, I saw the white frame. One of the pallbearers must have tucked it in there after the casket. I went around to the back, opened the hatch, and climbed in. Just as I reached the frame and was ready to crawl back out, I felt a body slide next to me. Brandy. This is perfect, she exclaimed with a crazed look in her eyes, which scared and excited me. Quick, let's do this. She sat as she deftly closed the curtains and shut the hatch behind us. This felt like it came straight out of a novel, and so did the cliffhanger. Well, that was a long one. If you've made it this far, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. Number three, played with a girl and then got ahead at nine. 30 a.m. waiting for a Taco Bell to open when it was negative 15 degrees outside. We weren't dating. We were barely friends. We were doing a project together all weekend and needed food. We had 20 minutes to wait. She lifted her skirt and said she had an idea of how to pass the time. We never flirted or had any prior intention of fooling around. It never happened again, and we never spoke of it. We then grazed on 30 of Taco Bell over 10 hours while farting constantly and finishing our project. Number four, I was in the back seat of my car at a wedding with my wife at the time. We were going at it when the after party let out, and everyone there walked past our car, which happened to be the one parked closest to the door. The windows were completely fogged up. We had to lie there for about 20 minutes before opening the car door so I could pull up my pants and tuck in my shirt. My sister knew something was up. The next day I asked about the fogged up windows. But it was fun. One of the truly risque episodes with that wife. Whoa, 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 that wife? We're gonna need an update for this one. Number five, I have two. Me and my ex were walking down by the docks of boats in a stale park in Long Island. We were both in high school, so young and frisky, so we hopped in a random stranger's boat and started fooling around. Ended up with her on top while I was sitting in the captain's chair. And if I could go back and not do it, I wouldn't. Bad move on our part. The next was during the end of June, like 2009. I was 20 and my girlfriend was 18. It was really hot and I just got done with work, so I went and picked her up to go to the beach. On the way, I started kind of playing with her a bit, and within two minutes, she was giving me a hand, as I desperately looked for a place to park so we could do the deed. After like 40 seconds, I went, screw it, there we go, a double fence street, and pulled over. I had a RAV4, so we put the back seats down, and it got on top and started going to town. Left the windows down halfway since it was so nice out. After like five, ten minutes, we started hearing voices getting louder and getting very close to us. I look up and around and there are about ten parents standing in a group just milling about. I instantly duck down and go, don't move, so many parents. We both just freeze, literally immobilized like a T-Rex was searching for us. Their vision is based on movement. Turned out we decided to post up and do it right at a bus stop, dropping off the elementary school kids after a long day of school. Thankfully, the bus came about two minutes later, so we didn't have to wait long. Waited another two minutes, promptly finished up and got dressed and left quickly. These guys just kept going and going even after all those interruptions. Now that's dedication. Number six. Did my girlfriend to the kitchen counter while her grandma was just behind the door, two rooms away? Grandma came out, did the whole waistband pulling and sat down around the kitchen table. 
The grandma was eating and telling me about how her friend's stepson's brother's girlfriend's father won God knows what award when my girlfriend pulled my hand down there. I flinched and pulled away, but after a stealthy sloshing of my ear, you know I had to get a slice of that pie. My hands went to work on her while grandma was sitting directly in front of us. We're Muslim. Halal on the streets, haram in the sheets. Number seven. Okay, I have multiple stories about forbidden deeds, so I will give bullet points. So I did my friend's mom for three months, played with my friend's girlfriend while he drove me home, did my mom's friend in the other hole in the hood of my car next to a railroad track, had a group thing with two Asian ladies at a massage parlor by accident, did it with two women with terminal cancer, did the cashier at a gas station in the back on her lunch break. Everyone needs to keep their wives, girlfriends, Asian massage therapists, terminal cancer patients, and cashiers away from this guy. Oh, and everyone needs to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel too. Number 8. I went to a party while in college and it was about 3 a.m. so everyone was going to bed. My friend who invited me was going to sleep in the master bed with his best friend who was a girl. He told me I could sleep on the floor in the room and gave me a pillow and blanket. I went to go clean up from the party and she and I were just in the room. She told me that I didn't have to sleep on the floor because the bed could fit all three of us. So I drunkenly go up and climbed into the bed. As she lay next to me, my friend came back and got in the bed next to her. At this point, she was now in between us. About ten minutes go by and I'm just about to fall asleep when I feel a hand lay on my chest. Next thing I know, the hand is down there and fiddling around. I quickly came to realize that it was her, and immediately didn't know what to do considering my friend was also in bed. This went on for another five minutes with me, debating in my head if I should get up and leave or stay. Next thing I know, she grabs my hand and sticks it down there. I thought, well crap, this just got worse. So in the master bed, this random girl and I are playing with each other as my friend is sleeping next to us. Trust me, I wanted no part of this. She begins to quietly M. At this point, I'm just very disappointed in myself for doing, and there was really no going back at this point. All of a sudden, my friend gets up out of bed, walks around to the other side where I was, stops, turns, looks at both of us and yells, Just do it already! He then exits the room. I turn and look at the girl. She looks at me and we continued. Not my proudest moment, but I talked to him after and he was chill about it. Dude just wanted to get some sleep. Number nine, buckle up, folks. Bit of a long story. So my mom invited me as a plus one to a wedding in Mexico last year, so she and my grandma wouldn't have to drive alone. The bride-to-be was the daughter of one of my mom's best customers, so it was important to my mom to appear fairly civilized. But we ended up getting a little lit before the ceremony. Two for one on drinks at the pool before. Anyway, I met the bride's cousin at the reception who was seven years my elder. I was 22 and she was 29 and proceeded to hit on her and publicly feel her a little. It was not discreet. The bride definitely said something. The night progresses and we find our way back to her room, which was in a condo her parents were renting. Spicy stuff ensues that night and again in the morning. However, in the morning, during the act, I looked out at the beautiful view of the ocean because we didn't have blinds in the room. At that moment, I noticed in the reflection on the glass railing on the balcony that her parents were outside drinking their morning coffee while I was giving it to their daughter. They could have looked in at any moment. We went on for longer than I would like to admit. The whole morning, my mom had no idea where I'd gone off to and thought I'd been taken or something. Number 10. I did a lot with the same ex. Did it at a baby changing station in the women's room at Sheets while my sister and her boyfriend waited out in the car. Girls kept walking in while we were effing it out. A few cheered us on. One asked if it was all right to come in, and I was like, yep. Her parents took her daughter to Walmart one afternoon while we were at their house. We decided it was a good opportunity to get it on their couch while they were gone. I finish and look out the window, and her parents and her daughter are getting out of the car and walking in. We go into panic mode. I zip up and lay down, and she runs off to the bathroom. I think we would have gotten away with it had she not left her undies in the hallway. Fortunately, her daughter was an underwiser. The first night I met her was at a bar, and after I made some moves on her, she invited me back to her place. I did her on the couch for a while, but alas, whiskey junk. Got the evening short and she passed out. 
A little later, after she fell asleep, I heard movement upstairs, followed by a dude dressed in a camo in Dallas, cowboy's hat wielding a huge shotgun. She failed to mention she lived with her dad. Late one night, after blowing some perks, I had to run to my office to grab something. My office had a huge bay window facing the street in the first floor. We ended up doing the deed in front of that at 3 a.m. while some black dude spanged in the window cheering us on. Hey, it's a baby-changing station, not a baby-making one. Number 11. I'll let Reddit decide. Had an eight-month affair with a married woman I met in college. Once, while daytime screwing in my apartment, her husband called. To keep up her ruse of being out shopping, she answered the phone. After a minute of talking, I continued slowly, and she barely maintained composure during the five-minute phone call. At 18, my girlfriend at the time, Rose, saw a picture of my ex in my bedroom, Andrea. She asked who he was, and I explained that we were still friends. Rose said Andrea was pretty, so I jokingly asked if he wanted to meet her, as both girls were bisexual. She said yes, and the two hit it off and ended up going home together. The following morning, they were led into my house by my cousin, and they said they had a surprise for me. 8 a.m. group experience ensued on top of a bunk bed. At 24, a buddy and I were talking to the same girl online. During a UFC fight party at his place, we were buzzed and started messaging her. The conversation led to her agreeing to come over to see the both of us, insinuating the deed. He brushed it off, assuming she would bail. That's until my buddy got a call from her saying she was 10 minutes away. So naturally, we started pounding shots, since we originally didn't seriously think it was going to happen. She arrived and we went to his room. Buddy was on one side of the couch, she was in the middle, and I was on the other side. We did her an awkward silence until my buddy bailed. I finished up and sent her packing. The next morning, we noticed red everywhere. Turns out she was on her period and decided it was a good idea to do it with two guys she never met. Number 12. At a friend's huge high school grad party. A girl who I was friends with and also had a huge crush on was there. She also had a boyfriend who was at the party. We were all buzzed and around 3 a.m. everyone started finding a place to pass out. She and her boyfriend ended up finding a couch to fall asleep on and I found a place on the floor not far from them to pass out on. After her boyfriend fell asleep, she crawled over to me and just started making out with me out of nowhere and got on top and did all the work. Within at the most 10 feet from her boyfriend. It was the best night of my life. Number 13. I slept with my ex's ex in a barn in the middle of the night. But it turns out we were a little bit too loud and the farmer came out with his dogs to find us buried in a pile of hay. We shot up as fast as we could and made a dash back to where we had parked the car leaving all our clothes and dignity behind before the guy could release the hounds. Number 14. My wife's family took our two older kids, leaving us with just a four-month-old. We were all meeting up at this lake that is down a 30-kilometer dirt road. My wife and I pulled over and started going at it in the back seat of our van while our four-month-old is sleeping in the car seat. It was fantastic, but we had that van rocking like crazy. I've not had a whole lot of car stuff, but I totally did not expect to be able to rock the vehicle as much as we did. Anyways, as if doing it beside your baby isn't bad enough, right at the height of it all, her parents drove by. They were supposed to be ahead of us. They couldn't see in the van, but it was rocking like crazy, so they had to know. Your baby's sleeping, and you decide to rock your entire van. Amazing parents. What's it like doing the dirty with people from other cultures? Number one. The first time I had an intimate time with a Japanese lady, I woke up to a rather unusual sight. Instead of my clothes tossed around the room as I usually leave them, everything was neatly folded at the foot of my bed, even my tidy whities Apparently, while I was fast asleep, she took it upon herself to tidy things up. It was a weird but thoughtful gesture that I didn't expect. It made me laugh, waking up to such an organized scene after a night of spontaneity. That's the dream right there. Number two, I wish she was all curious about my junk, thinking it was kind of odd looking. I was this 20-year-old American just standing there in front of a Czech co-worker. She wanted to pay me back for teaching for a class that week. She got bare and I was like, wow, you look gorgeous. Then it was my turn. And as soon as I did, she immediately wondered aloud why my thing looked like a hose. 
I figured out later that she'd only seen ones that weren't snipped before. Mine was probably the first thing like that she ever saw. Either that, or mine was just weird. Who knows? So after the whole weird merchandise comment, things heated up between us. I took my sweet time, and she was totally loving it. Then out of the blue she went, I want to try the bunny. I'm sitting there like, the bunny? What's that? She got some downward dog waving her behind and insists, this is the bunny. I'm like, nope, that's a doggy. She's there shaking her head behind this big old peach, and she's like, nope, it's definitely the bunny. We kind of argued about it, but well, we just went with it, so we're having this debate about position names while actually doing it. It was a mix of good and not so good. It held up pretty well, but she went off and started a family with another guy and now has a bunch of kids. So I guess she got her way. She won there. We're calling it the bunny. That's funny, man. That girl was definitely feeling the urge to hop around and be as crazy as rabbits. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser-friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing Confessions community so you can support the channel. Number three. I've always stuck to dating within my race. Just happened that way. When I turned 21 and started hitting the clubs regularly, I met this incredibly attractive guy. His family hailed from India, but he was the first in his family born in America. He had a smile that lit up the room. Always cheerful, always in high spirits. I was really starting to fancy him. After a few weeks of flirting, I decided it was time to take things to the next level. Let me paint the scene for you. In my living room apartment, mid-afternoon, he's seated on my couch and we're getting close. We're sharing passionate kisses. I swear the windows were fogging up. As we kissed, I started taking off some layers. Then he leans in and whispers, I need to tell you something. He proceeds to share that he's well endowed. Really, really well endowed. I paused, utterly confused. Why was he mentioning this? I mean, he was definitely in for a good time. No need to overhype. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. It was him boasting during our intimate moments. He was giving me a heads up. Have you ever gone to an adult store just for laughs with your friends? Well, my pals and I did once. We picked up the biggest toy there and goofed around taking silly pictures. That toy? That's what this guy was packing. All I could think was, is this real life? Of course, I asked to see it. I couldn't believe it. And oh my, this guy who was maybe 5'8 and 145 pounds had a massive surprise down there. I was stumped. I told him honestly there was no way I could handle that. It was just too much for me. He then shared how it had been a struggle in his intimate life. He'd never been able to fully connect with someone, never received satisfaction. While guys might have been envious, he secretly wished for something more ordinary. We stopped talking shortly after that. And despite the specifics in the story, I never went through with it. It was simply overwhelming. Number four. I headed off with a lovely Brazilian girl while she was visiting her country to learn English. Her English was pretty basic, so her day was filled with amusing, awkward moments and a lot of Google Translate. Living with my parents at the time, I thought it'd be a sweet gesture to take her to the mountains for a mesmerizing view of the city lights at night. It was dark, peaceful, and with no one around, things heated up. Wanting to be considerate, I offered to do something nice downstairs, but she stopped me, maybe a couple of times. Didn't think much of it, and we just went all the way under the moonlight. I was really surprised by how great the whole experience felt. After we finished, I offered again. I wasn't sure if she was done, and she declined, trying to explain something in Portuguese. I handed her my phone for translation, and she said, I'm unwell. She didn't seem unwell at all. So I checked the translation, and it hinted at something like, Menstruata, just a guess. I glanced down and saw red everywhere. It was definitely a bit of a clean-up the next morning, but what surprised me was how little it seemed to affect the moment. She didn't seem embarrassed or bothered about not discussing it beforehand. I couldn't tell if it was a cultural thing or just her personal style. Nevertheless, I can't wait for her next visit. Dude was so close to turning into a vampire kid. Number five. After college, I did my Japanese professor for a couple of months. She was a 27-year-old exchange student, TA or something. Had a situation much like yours. Woke up after her first overnight stay. She was gone, but the place was spotless. I had a messy roommate back then, yet she left a note. 
Paraphrase, Ohio. Good morning. I woke up early, cleaned while waiting. You're still asleep, so I'm off to the library. She'd washed all the dishes, did laundry, neatly folded, and hung them. Even swept the carpet instead of vacuuming to avoid waking me. Cleaned up after my dog's accident and shockingly made my bed, with me still in it. At that time, I was struggling in life and couldn't appreciate someone caring for me, so the relationship didn't last. Yes, she made the bed with me in it. The covers were snugly tucked around me, and it was quite a struggle to break free from the soft confines when I woke up. But the bed-making wasn't the most surprising thing. She walked home to avoid disturbing my sleep. Once, I called her after a party, and she walked back several miles in the morning, just to not inconvenience me. In her PJs, no less. I'd always assumed she was working on a marriage visa. The Ohio was an inside joke from a class discussion that turned into a good morning joke in Japan being a U.S. state. We kept it up throughout the semester. Her no was perhaps her way of being funny, or maybe my memories mixed up about the Ohio, but I believe she did write it. It was one of my least pleasant intimate moments. The absolute worst, yet I went back for more. It could have been incredible if I knew how to appreciate it. She never initiated anything and never showed enthusiasm, but she'd do whatever I wanted. The only time she hesitated was when it went a certain way. You don't have to do that, she said. I enjoyed it nearly as much as anything else. I did it anyway, and she watched, somewhat disgusted. When we were intimate, she'd lie motionless and silent. Number six. I've been to Russia a few times and met some truly wonderful people there. This particular time I was living in Moscow and received an invitation from a friend to spend a weekend at her dacha near St. Petersburg, who I'd met two years earlier at a conference and hit it off as friends. Interestingly, she once assumed I might be inclined towards guys because I was overly friendly and didn't show any interesting girls during that conference. Before the trip, she mentioned that another friend, let's call her Anna, would also be joining us for the weekend. I arrived at the railway station quite late, and my friend, accompanied by a robust Russian gentleman named Pavel, picked me up. Pavel, it turns out, oversees the Dhaka when the family isn't around and engages in activities like hunting in the forests. We headed to the Dasha, and upon arrival, I met Anna, and we immediately clicked. In the true Russian style, the evening commenced with a lot of delicious food and drinks. Pavel went off on some other task, and we all indulged in a bit too much vodka. The conversation was flowing, and Anna and I were enjoying some lively banter, the kind that hinted at a bit of romance. Eventually, it became quite evident that the night might lead to some cozy time together. My friend seemed to sense this, and surprisingly, she was completely cool about it. My sleeping arrangements were in the second house of the dacha, but Anna, who didn't usually stay there, volunteered to help make my bed. Let's rewind a bit. In general, Russian women tend to marry early, start families young, and sometimes experience divorce early on. Anna, a few years older than me, and I woke up the next morning, had a bit of cuddle time, and out of nowhere she dropped the surprise. Firstly, she revealed she was married once and is now divorced, and secondly, she has a little son who's also spending the weekend with us. If she mentioned this the night before, it totally slipped my mind, but it was all fresh news to me at that moment. Now, this next part gets a tad nerve-wracking. Anna was previously married to Pavel. Yes, the intimidating guy who enjoys hunting. Imagine my shock when I realized Pavel, her ex, was sleeping in the room next door while we were having a particularly loud, rowdy time together. I'm completely mortified by this revelation, especially when her son walked in and started chatting. Picture the scene. I've just discovered that Pavel, who's potentially armed with hunting gear, might not be my arch nemesis now. Meanwhile, her child is in the room while I'm lying in bed, still there, right beside her. And to top it off, we're at the dacha that's about 30 kilometers away from the nearest town. Surprisingly, it all worked out fine in the end. My friend found the whole situation incredibly funny and teased me endlessly about how she initially thought I was into guys. Her son turned out to be a nice kid. Pavel didn't come after me. I don't even remember seeing him much for the rest of that weekend. Anna remained lovely, and, well, we found sneaky ways to spend some alone time a couple more times away from the crowd. It's a story I can laugh about now, but I'll admit, 
At the moment, I was quite terrified. What a wild ride that weekend turned out to be. Story 7. I have a few interesting stories to share. My first experience was with a girl from Mexico, and she was pretty intense. Lots of biting and scratching, which caught me off guard as an inexperienced guy. It was nerve-wracking, being my first time, but we really liked each other, so we ended up being regular partners. Then there's my ex fiance who is Korean. Even though I am Korean-American, my upbringing was pretty Americanized, so I wasn't familiar with many aspects of Korean culture until I lived there. In Korean culture, group dates or meetings are common. It's less awkward than a bland date or SEO getting. During these group dates, people often get a bit tipsy and touchy-feely since it's a one-is-to-one-guy-girl ratio, and everyone's supposedly single. Sometimes a girl might pretend to be too buzzed and ask the guy she likes to take her home, giving them an excuse to leave. My ex-fiancé did this with me, and things got pretty heated in the taxi back home. We were both into it and a little tipsy, and in the heat of the moment, we forgot to buy a rubber. She later suggested using the morning-after pill, not fully understanding its impact, because there wasn't much education on contraception. Eventually, she started taking regular pills, considering rubber as a waste of time. Then I went to my ex-girlfriend from France, who I met while living in Seoul. She spoke fluent English, French, and Korean, but we stuck to talking in English. Apart from the incredible intimacy, she started whispering Korean in my ear during and after, which I found very sexy. When I asked, she mentioned it was for fun and giggles. Now, thanks to her, I've got a thing for European women who speaks an Asian language. Number 8. I met this amazing Chilean lady at a local bar in my hometown. Her first day was pretty swift after dinner and a concert. The morning after, she's lying there, fast asleep, and I notice something different about her figure compared to what I'm used to. It was my first time with a Latina woman, and I was sort of intrigued by her curves. I found myself checking her out from behind, totally fascinated. Suddenly, she wakes up and catches me admiring her. It startled her a bit, but I managed to explain myself. Fast forward to now, we've been married for about half a year, and this little incident happened over four years ago. I still playfully refer to it as her hill, which I absolutely adore. Number nine, I'm a Scottish guy, and I had a thing with a Malaysian girl who was studying at my university for a year. After she gave me a knob job for the first time, I tried to reciprocate by doing the same thing for her. But when I started, she was completely confused and didn't get what I was doing at all. I explained, saying I was just trying to return the favor but she firmly stated it was impossible for a guy to give a girl a knob job. It took some explaining, but when she finally let me try, she was all for it. That year still brings a smile to my face. Regarding her, she's a Malay girl, studying abroad for her final year. We were in the same course, and it seemed like she was more reserved back in Malaysia, but wanted to let loose in Scotland. Despite her previous experiences, she was unaware of this particular thing, which I found a bit surprising. We had a lot of fun that year, but unfortunately, she moved back home, and that was the end of it. Maybe their intentions were purely academic, like this guy is probably going to become a cunning linguistic professor someday. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Number 10. I met this girl from Turkey. She opened up to me about her first physical relationship, which happened while she was still a student. It was with an older man who would sneak into her room through the second-story window for their encounters. What struck me was how she didn't seem bothered by this at all. In fact, when she reminisced about the experience, she expressed positive feelings about it. It almost seemed like she was implying it was culturally acceptable, that her parents' reaction to the situation was more along the lines of mild disapproval rather than outrage. She also mentioned that similar experiences were quite common among her friends, I didn't know how to process this information. Otherwise, she appeared to be a regular person, albeit a bit prone to violence and lacking a sense of humor. She also had a strong fascination with adult videos featuring bisexual individuals and possessed a vast collection of toys. Number 11. As things were getting started, he leaned in close, his English slightly hesitant, and said, Um, I hope this doesn't come off as impolite or weird, but I want to melt your brain. That's something people say, right? Afterward, I mentioned that indeed he managed to blow my mind, which seemed to please him greatly. Now for the bonus story. In his attempts to charm me, 
He gazed up at the moon and voiced how awesome it would be to travel there. I nodded in agreement, and then he asked in his endearing, slightly offbeat way, So is that on your Craigslist? It's one of those memories that always brings a smile to my face. Number 12. I'm Indo-Canadian. I once had a brief romantic fling with a Franco-Ontarian, a bilingual French-Canadian, for a few weeks. He was incredibly kind, had this adorable accent and a charming beard. He asked if I'd fancy some playful talk in French, and I agreed. Slowly, I began chatting sweetly with him in Hindi. It was the most intense closeness I've experienced. In the mornings, he also whipped up some French toast drizzled with maple syrup for me. That was definitely a unique reaction. Number 13. I also had an intimate moment with a Japanese girl. She was really into anime and embodied the exact persona of an anime girl. She giggled and covered her mouth when I started disrobing. She also gasped and hid her face when things went further. She even made these really hype-ish squeaks during the whole moment, and she laughed and giggled throughout the entire experience. It was bizarre. On another note, she was a total pro at playing the flute, and after catching a glimpse of me completely exposed, she mentioned she didn't expect guys to be that size. That was the first and last time I've ever heard that. Dude, I guess she was just really amazed to see how her senpai's magic harp evolved into Gairados. Number 14. Gay guy here. Had a thing with a native Emirati during my visit to Abu Dhabi. Before we got intimate, we exchanged messages, and I was curious about being gay in the UAE. His response was, lol, I'm not gay, I'm a top. That single reply provided a big insight into how things are viewed for gays in the UAE. It's interesting how guys can do a lot together without being labeled as gay, but once you take the receiving end, that's where the label comes in. Yeah, I bet that guy's straight, and so are spaghetti noodles, until it gets wet. Number 15. Hey there, Lady Canadian here. Had a Turkish boyfriend who was all about one particular style, but I wasn't into it. Didn't seem like he enjoyed anything else much. And there's my Chinese boyfriend at 35 who was super proud to show off his first chest hair before we got into things. Nearly forgot about the Persian fella. My experience was mostly with kissing white boys before I met him. Took some getting used to those full lips. Felt like kissing worms. Oh, and my Bahamian friend. She mostly dates white men and gripes about their flat lips. Number 16. I'm a lesbian. And I spent an evening with this lively, dark-skinned girl from Ukraine, convinced her to join me back in my hotel room. She was a bit nervous being with another woman for the first time, but soon enough she was enjoying herself. She stayed the night, and the next morning she dashed out enthusiastically. I showed her a few things, and she took it, them meagerly. When we finished, she quickly dressed up. I asked if she was leaving, and she said she was just going to the pharmacy. I inquired why and she said she was picking a pregnancy tests for both of us. I couldn't tell, but burst out laughing. Number 17. I had quite an adventurous time with a Mexican girl I met in Berlin. We were both staying at the same hotel, and we hit it off. The night after a few drinks, she took the lead in everything. Woke up the next day with marks and scratches all over me. She woke up and mentioned, I need to rush to church right now. Thanks for the night. Please leave. We both got dressed without saying a word, and I headed back to my room. I saw her later, but she acted like I wasn't there. Then later at night, I heard a knock on my door. She came in twice and dashed off to church both times. Number 18. I once had a fling with a Polish au pair, and we got chatting about our past partners. Mentioned my diverse dating history, sharing the ethnicities of my exes. She interrupted me asking, Were all these girls born in America? And to admit they were, they've only had relationships with Americans. Well, not anymore. Number 19. I've been told I'm a pretty good kisser. I had a few compliments here and there, but then there was this one time with the Chinese guy. Things were getting intense. The kissing was going strong, and out of nowhere he breaks off and just blurts. You're so hardy. Hardier than a peach. Then dives right back into the makeout session. Now I'll admit I was a bit puzzled. Hardier than a peach? What on earth did that mean? But it was a compliment, I guess. A weird one for sure, but I'll take it. Well, I guess it just meant she was extra juicy and sweet. Number 20. My ex-fiancé was British. He told me to go on to sleep after we did it and that he'd knock me up in the morning. I looked at him like he grew four eyes and he said, Oh yeah, that means something that we don't want to happen here in America. 
I meant to wake you up. Number 21. I once dated a woman from Honduras who would switch from English to Spanish, C, 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 when she reached cloud nine. Quite peculiar considering when she wasn't in that moment, she often expressed her disdain for the Spanish language, claiming it was of no use to her. Well, turns out she had one use for it after all. It brings to mind how women tend to use their native language when giving birth, a fact uncovered, apparently, by the Gestapo. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. See you in the next one. Who is that one person you never expected to do the dirty with? Number one, I went through a period of insatiable thirst and had some gross, intimate encounters because I was drunk and would take anything with little effort. The worst was an old married woman who was super into it. After just meeting, she was talking about inviting me to parties where her family would be and we'd mess around in another room. I asked her if her husband had a weapon, and she said yes, and seemed to get off on it. After her first and only encounter, I deleted her number and ignored her. Then there was my co-worker and female best friend. We had an awesome friendship, and we'd fool around if we were bored and curious. But one night while we were working at a Halloween train where you put on horror skits as a small train goes by, out of nowhere, she said, I want to blow your air pipes as the train goes by. I said, shut up, nerd. Then she got into position behind this fake doctor's table. The train went by, and the passengers wondered what was scary about a motionless doctor standing behind a table. Whoa, that was a wild ride. They should have at least put up a sign that said, do not disturb Dr. Minerva studying anatomy. Number two, I was in a band thing, drum and bugle corps as a late teen. We met once a month for a weekend to learn music and other stuff. And then we did a show tour for the summer. One year, this girl from the other side of my state joined, and we happened to stand next to each other. She was a super fit cheerleader type who was also in a band in her hometown. She said something mildly flirty, and I said something flirty back. Time and words passed, and we were soon waking up in the middle of the night and trying to sneak off and get intimate in some school in the middle of nowhere. We almost got caught, but we managed to make plans for next month. Well, she missed the next month, and I missed the month after that. By the time the all-day part of the tour came around, we were both under a lot of pressure and there was no opportunity for anything romantic. Well, we did not click again. We hated each other's guts for the next two months. She was not the greatest player, and she was a super popular kid in her school, but she was not popular or well-liked in this group of people. That made her super angry. I was a nerd band geek at my school. I was well-liked in this group of people, so she took her anger out on me. I fought back by making fun of her playing, and she fought back by being a raging jerk to me and trying to belittle me whenever possible. Adults had to get involved once or twice. After our last show, we were still two, five hundred miles from home, and all the pressure we were under was gone. We started to be normal people again. She gave me a look one day that I interpreted as, I've been thirsty for two months, jerk, and I hate you, but you're still the nicest person to me here. I looked back at her like, you for real right now? And she nodded her head to me and we went for a walk. I don't remember a word we said to each other, but we hated each other's guts and did it in some long grass in Mississippi. It was amazing except for the part where we both got bit by mosquitoes on our sensitive bits. We weren't able to find a time or place again, but we tried. I wish I could find her on the internet, apologize for being a jerk, and thank her for that one post to her intense time. That was the only time I'd ever done something so fiercely passionate, and it was completely unexpected. Kim, I hope you're well. I'm sorry for my part in making your summer miserable. Number three. I had two very unexpected chances with women. The first one happened when I was 20. I'd been dating a girl for a year and she had just finished two years of community college and decided to go to the University of Hawaii. She went to visit to see if she would even like it and I ended up finding out that she cheated on me. And one of the main reasons why she chose Hawaii was to be with this other guy. I broke up with her when she got back and I got a call from her best friend saying, Hey, I know you and Blank broke up. Do you want to come over and talk to clear your head? I took her up on her offer, and she lived literally around the corner from my ex's parents. 
It was just to talk, but I could tell that she was interested in me. I said, well, it's getting late, so I better head off. I got in my car and got a call immediately saying, hey, you forgot something. I didn't forget anything. It was just a ploy for me to get to bed with her. She ended up saying that she didn't really like her so-called best friend or my ex. This ended up going on nearly every day for about a year. She ended up moving away a few states over, unfortunately. My second unexpected encounter was when I was 22. I had moved to Europe, and after about a year of being here, our friend came and visited. We did a little European tour, and one of our stops was Oktoberfest. I spent most of the day drinking. He ended up drinking too much, so I took him back to our Airbnb, and the people we were with told me to come back. So I did. I have no idea how I managed to do it, but this beautiful German girl and I tried communicating, even though I only speak English and she was only able to speak German and very broken English. The night was ending. I said my goodbyes and her friends asked if I could walk her home because it was on the way to my Airbnb. I was using Google Translate a lot, but we were laughing and having a good time. We got some food, then we got to her flat. She opened the door and said, come in, come in for one last drink. So I did. We weren't really talking coherently, but we seemed to just enjoy each other's company. She went to the bathroom, came back out bare, and we ended up getting it on a few times before falling asleep. My friend was due to leave back to the U.S. later that evening, and my flight was a few hours after him. The German girl and I exchanged numbers, thinking I'd never see her again. I said my goodbyes to my friend and sent him on his way to the airport. I texted the German girl with Google Translate, basically saying that I really enjoyed spending time with her and that our time together was short but enjoyable. She asked if I could come back over, so I decided to not go get my flight because I felt like I was in love. I ended up staying with her for two more days. We had a lot of fun, and we tried to understand each other better. I can honestly say that it was probably one of the best times of my life. We parted ways, but we still keep in contact every so often. She's fluent in English now, and we've seen each other a few times. We're both recently single again, and we plan on seeing each other in October. Number four. Back then, I was a 38-year-old single dad working the night shift and raising three kids in a small town in Ohio. One weekend night, around 1 a.m., I found myself wide awake. I stepped out onto my front porch to soak in the sound of the rain, which was coming down quite heavily. Just as I was about to light a cigarette, a voice from the sidewalk about 20 feet away piped up saying, Uh, can I bum one of those? To my surprise, a young woman was walking down the sidewalk in the pouring rain. She appeared to be in her early 20s and was undeniably attractive as part of shivers in her figure hugging black dress that barely reached her thighs. I welcomed her onto my porch and offered her a cigarette, inquired about her well-being, and assured her that I could call for help if needed whether it be the police or her family. Tears welled up in her eyes. I fetched a towel for her to dry off and suggested she come inside to get warm and dry. However, at that moment, she seemed either too embarrassed or too afraid to accept my offer. So I decided to strike up a conversation. Initially, she didn't say much, still teary-eyed, but after about 15 minutes, it became evident that she needed to unload some of her thoughts. She had gone to a party with friends and had a crush on the host. To her dismay, her friends had shifted their attention at the party and started pursuing the same guy. One of her friends had even become intimate with him. Feeling upset, she had abruptly left the party and ventured out into the rain, despite living in the next town over. After about an hour of conversation, she began to feel more at ease around me and asked if she could use my restroom. I agreed, and she freshened up. While she wasn't there, I grabbed a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants for her to wear. When she emerged from the bathroom, it was hard not to chuckle because she was practically swimming in my oversized clothes. This brought a smile to her face and lifted her spirits. I asked her about her plans, offering to drive her home or let her stay on my couch until she could sort things out with her friends or family. We sat in silence for a moment as she weighed her options. Finally, she looked at me and asked if she could spend the night on my couch and leave in the morning to avoid any uncomfortable confrontations with her so-called friends or family. I agreed and provided her with a pillow and a blanket. After all of this, I showed her the kitchen and then headed upstairs to sleep.
knowing that I had to pick up my kids the next day. The next thing I knew, I saw the soft glow of the nightlight I kept in the hallway as my bedroom door creaked open. Initially, I thought she might be feeling uneasy in an unfamiliar house, but to my surprise, she climbed into bed with me and asked, Is this okay? My response was somewhat astonished. Uh, sure. She nestled next to me, wanting to be the little spoon. I'm not particularly proud of it, but like most men, when you have an attractive woman so close, certain things happen. I was into it instantly, and she noticed, taking the initiative and setting up a new tone in the bedroom. We shared a night that neither of us will ever forget. I woke up to an empty bed and a note in the kitchen. It read, Thank you for being a good man. I haven't seen her since, but I hope she's doing well in life. She changed my life for the better. Strangely, after that night, I gained a boost in confidence and ended up in a lasting relationship with my current girlfriend for over a year now. I'll always remember her, and even my girlfriend would like to thank her. Without that newfound confidence, I doubt we would have ever crossed paths, all thanks to a woman I met on a rainy night. Number five. I once had a serendipitous encounter with a woman in a bus journey from Amsterdam to Brussels. We were both solo travelers, and she sat across from me, striking up a conversation. After about an hour of chatting, things took a turn for the steamy when she expressed a desire to get to know me better. So I obliged. There were only two other passengers and the coach, and they were seated up front, seemingly asleep as we traveled through the night. Before I knew it, we found ourselves engaging in some intimate activities in the back seat. This happened twice more before we arrived in Brussels. After a parting kiss, we went our separate ways, leaving me to contemplate the sheer randomness of the event. Now let me address some questions and concerns that might arise from this story. Firstly, there was no protection used during our encounter, and I spent the following weeks or months worrying about potential consequences. However, I did consult a doctor, and fortunately, he received the all clear. It's worth noting that I had no other intimate partners during this time. The coach ride itself took just under three hours, and we had a somewhat extended stop and bragged, though I can't quite recall why. As for the intensity of the encounter, it wasn't a marathon-like experience. Instead, it was a series of three brief moments of passion, preceded by some light-hearted fun. I was 21 at the time with plenty of youthful energy and a sense of adventure, which only added to the excitement. Some might say that my experience resembled a more explicit version of Before Sunrise, a reference to the movie. Number six, I met a famous actress on a hike in Hawaii. She had rolled her ankle and gotten a heat stroke, so I stopped to help. I had a first aid kit and taped up her ankle. We shared my water and snacks, and I drove her back to her car where her friends were waiting. I was totally shocked when I realized who she was. I was so intimidated that I left without asking for her number. Over the next few days, I couldn't stop thinking about how I had blown my opportunity. I was disappointed in myself. Three days before I was scheduled to leave Hawaii, I was running down the road near Poipu when a jeep pulled over in front of me. It was the actress. We spent the next two weeks together, and I even lost my job because I stayed with her so long. In 2017, I was on the same island with my wife and kids, ran into the actress, her husband and their kids. My wife pulled my shirt and said, that's the actress you told me about. Prove your story. So I walked up and said hello. She remembered me. My wife liked the story, but she hated that it was true. I don't think the actress's husband liked the fact that his wife kept meeting me at the pool and swim up bar. I've been lucky to have some really special connections with women in my life. Number seven. My boyfriend and I had been friends for years, and I had a massive crush on him, but it felt like having a crush on a teacher, completely hopeless. So I never made a move, because I didn't want to embarrass myself. He watched me go through a few failed relationships and struggle with my untreated bipolar disorder. But even though we got along great and hung out occasionally, I assumed he thought I was an unpredictable mess. In 2020, my last relationship crashed and burned. Soon after, I finally got diagnosed and medicated. A few months later, he invited me over for a beer after work, which wasn't unusual. But to my surprise, he made a move on me. We've been together ever since and never imagined it would ever happen. We have a very happy and healthy relationship, 
But every now and then, I'm struck with this belief that it's actually happening, in the good way. Number eight. I made a two and a half hour drive to a drive bar to hang out with some friends in my former and current city. I didn't expect to encounter a particularly attractive bartender at this place. He kept calling me beautiful and love while serving us, and my friends were telling me he was obviously showing interest in me. I brushed it off, saying, I'm sure he calls everyone that. I'd just gone through a tough breakup, so I wasn't really looking for any romantic involvement. However, as the night went on and the compliments made me feel desired again, I ended up getting on with him in his car. He dropped me off in my friend's apartment afterward and then invited me back the following week to have dinner with him for his birthday. I agreed, and we got together again. This time I had a hotel room. Later he invited me to the bar for New Year's Eve because he knew my friend and her boyfriend would be there. I joined them and he and I shared a kiss at midnight. I hung around until closing, assuming we'd continue hanging out afterward, but he simply said, I'm going to be here late. That was the end of it. Never heard from him again. I'll say I'm glad about it. Those spontaneous encounters were just what I needed in my life at the time. I don't want anything more than that. Number nine. Fresh out of law school, I landed a job as an associate in a large firm. However, one of the senior partners seemed to have a grudge against me, constantly criticizing my work and displaying a generally unfriendly demeanor. Honestly, I didn't care much because I thought he was an arrogant jerk, and pretty much everyone in the office shared that sentiment. Eventually, I decided to switch to another firm located across town. Skipping ahead a few years, I found myself in an unexpected situation involving his daughter. It was an extraordinary experience. The first couple of times were a bit strange because I was so captivated by the idea of being involved with this guy's daughter that I forgot to fully appreciate the physical aspect of it. It was almost like an out-of-body experience. Whoa, I'm getting it on with Tom's daughter. Whoa, this is Tom's daughter's big V. Whoa, Tom's daughter is sitting in places she probably shouldn't be. As it turned out, those encounters ended up being some of the most passionate and fulfilling experiences of my life. I would occasionally visit her social media profile to relive those intimate moments I shared with Tom's daughter. Talk about revenge. This guy went from zero to hero in one fell swoop by getting lucky with his hater's daughter. Number 10. It was my supervisor on the second shift. I was on the first shift. I don't know how it happened. We worked at a notorious building, you could say, but it's security. The building was always empty for its size, there weren't too many people, and we had the keys to go anywhere. We did it on the roof of the city view, in the office bathroom, in a huge storage room, and in our boss's office. The craziest part is that I never saw it coming. It was a sneaky one. It really buttered me up and gained my trust before making a move. What started off as a fun night on the roof turned into insatiable lust that I'll honestly remember for the rest of my life. Number 11. I liked my coworker at summer camp a lot, but I was too shy to make a move. One weekend, a bunch of us went to a friend's slash coworker's place for the weekend. On Saturday night, she walked in and laid down next to me in the air mattress. Being the clueless guy I am, I said, um, hey. She just sat up on my lap and started kissing me. Things quickly escalated and we were having a great time. However, I'm a heavy dude. And at some point, the air mattress popped off and the mattress deflated. It took me a minute to realize that I was just lying on the floor. She went to the bathroom to clean up and I got the air pump to reinflate the mattress. I guess everyone else heard what happened because they started laughing when they saw me lying on the floor. I guess that air mattress couldn't handle how things got hot and heavy that night. Number 12. A week after my wife asked for a divorce, I took a solo trip to Costa Rica which we had planned to do together. I needed some time to grieve and figure out what to do with my life. I wasn't interested in dating, one nights, or rebounds. But then I met an American woman in line at an ice cream shop. We had dinner, drinks, and then a passionate night together in the jungle. Luckily, she was prepared. It was great. That was 11 years ago. We've been married for seven years and our daughter is three. By the way, she was finishing up grad school in another state at the time and spent two years in the Peace Corps in Africa. So I had some time to cool off and reset after the divorce, but yeah, I definitely prefer being in a happy marriage to being single. Number 13. I went on a solo cruise to the Caribbean when I was 25. 
On the last night, I met a recently divorced 42-year-old mom of three who was also cruising by herself. We stayed up the whole night talking and getting to know each other. The next day, she skipped her flight home and I drove her to Atlanta, where she lived. We got a hotel downtown and spent the night together. The next morning, I took her to the airport and we never saw each other again. We texted a few times after that, but it didn't go anywhere. If I had gone to Atlanta the next couple of years before I met my wife, I might have reached out to her and tried to reconnect. Number 14. My bully's girlfriend in the high school band room. Not sure if she was looking to get back at him or if she was just attracted to me, but she said yes when I asked her if she wanted to do it. Went to one of the practice rooms and turned off the lights. Never thought a girl would say yes to me so quickly, especially not her. She grabbed my hand and led me to their room. Her boyfriend wasn't there. It was four to five minutes after school and my friends were waiting for the ride home. They realized what we were doing when we disappeared into the side room and they decided to play the Jaws theme song. It interrupted the moment, but it also made it last longer. It was pretty hot knowing that the bully's harsh words against me really backfired. Number 15. I was the niece of my father's then fiance. We met at a family gathering and started texting soon after. We then discovered that we lived in the same apartment complex. We were both lonely and needed friends, so we decided to hang out. We started sleeping together in our second hangout. Even though we both knew we weren't right for each other, we were too different, but we started dating anyway. That was almost eight years ago. We're now happily married with a beautiful daughter. By the way, my father's engagement didn't work out. He just got married to someone who's a much better fit for him. I'm so happy for both of them. Classic case of opposites attract, right? Number 16, when I was a sophomore in high school and he was a freshman, we sat next to each other in class and became friends. He was a nerdy, awkward kid, and I had a cool older boyfriend. Several years later, after we had both graduated, I ran into him at his workplace, and he had completely transformed. We went on a few dates and had an amazing time together in bed. Apparently, he had a huge crush on me back in Spanish class, and it felt good to finally make that fantasy come true for him. Well, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. What is your craziest one-night stand story? Number one. Not my story, but a friend of mine. We were at work, and during a little downtime, us three guys started to share our one-night stand stories. My friend went first. We'll call my friend Dave. He starts his story by being in a bar somewhere in Michigan with a couple of friends. Said he was having fun when he noticed a cute girl across the bar. As the night went by, he noticed that the cute girl had noticed his group of friends, and after building a bit of courage, he said frickin' and walked over to introduce himself. He mentioned that besides being cute, she was very attractive. They hit it off, and they left the bar and headed to the girl's place. There. They had some wine, and one thing led to another on the couch, and they were making out. A couple of seconds into making out, the girl stopped and pulled away. Dave said he thought that that was far she was going to go that night, but was instantly surprised when she said, Before we continue, I gotta let you know that I'm a freak. We can do whatever you want first. Then it's my turn. Dave told us that he didn't think about it and immediately agreed. So the action went from the couch in the living room to her room, and he said that they went at it for a good while and they did everything, BJ, 69, anal, etc. Once he finished, they laid in bed for a minute when she said, Okay, my turn, and got out of bed and walked out of the room. Dave said he got excited for round two and wanted to see what was in store. The girl came back moments later with a large, empty dinner plate. Confused. He asked what it was for. The girl repeats again that she was a freak and hoped she wouldn't scare him and asked Dave to go to the bathroom and poop on it to lay a log down as long as possible. Dave said he repeated what she had asked back to her to make sure he understood. The girl confirmed and said, yes, please, after you do it. I'm going to put it in the freezer and use it as a dildo later. Dave said he had to keep his word and agreed to the deed. However, he couldn't just poop on command and told her he would do it as soon as he needed to go number two. Dave said the girl got back into bed and round number two got underway, and they ended up passing out on the bed. Dave woke up sometime in the middle of the night and headed to the bathroom not before grabbing the shiny white ceramic plate from the nightstand and laying a log down on it. He said that seeing a crap log on a kitchen plate, 
started to make him wonder how much of a freak this girl really was, and I guess it scared him a little bit. He said he went back to the room, got dressed, and pieced out of the girl's place. What did he do with the plate? He said he took it to the kitchen and left it on the counter for her to find when she woke up. Number two. I used to work with a guy that was kind of rough. He had been to prison and hung out in some shady biker bars. He always had some crazy stories. His name was Rick. He was a tall, tall, thin guy with long, blonde hair and fingers six inches long and oven mitts for hands. He was probably 6'4". I would imagine he had quite the member. Anyways, he said he was hanging out at a friend's house and his friend casually asked him if he wanted to frick his wife, so he did. The guy was sitting in a chair in the corner while Rick pounded his wife missionary. The wife was screaming bloody murder and he was really getting into it. All of a sudden, he felt something on his balls. He quickly looked behind him and his friend was on his knees at the foot of the bed with his hand between Rick's legs and was lifting his balls. He said, sorry, I couldn't see. Number three, I have a good one for this. Was in my early thirties and had recently gotten out of a bad relationship. I ended up chatting with a girl from Occupid who I thought was very pretty and intelligent. She was a PhD candidate at NYU for philosophy. Our plan was to go to an art show and then a bar after. The art show had free wine, which was a good cost saver for me. But for her, the wine wasn't even close to her appetite. We get to the bar and she immediately orders three shots of whiskey for each of us. An hour later, even more shots, and I'm completely blasted. We ended up taking a cab back to my place. We start getting into it, despite both being very drunk. She's aggressive, so she starts riding me on the bed hard. A moment later, she punches me in the face. I shake it off like it was an accident, but then she does it again. And when I say punch, I mean it. It was definitely hard enough to break my nose, though thankfully she didn't. In any case, I'm really drunk, so I don't react at all. About a minute later, she gets exhausted, rolls off me, and falls asleep instantaneously. She sleeps for the next 11 hours. I wake her up because I have to go to work. Never saw her again. Number four. One night, I met a girl at a club. I went back to hers and started getting frisky. She said that she was body conscious so wanted the lights out, and I was cool with that. Anyways, she's on top, grinding me hard, and we're both sweating loads. She's leaning in and kissing me, and I'm grabbing her chest, really having fun. After a while, I can feel the sweat pooling at the base of my neck and top of my chest, so I kind of just rub it off and end up rubbing my face. That's when I noticed. My sweat isn't normally like this. I taste blood on my lips, smell my fingers, and it smells like coins or something. I decided to let her finish as she was close to orgasm, but I'm freaking out a bit. A knot in pain, and she seems happy. I finally stop her and say that I think something is wrong, so I kind of lean over to turn on the lamp, and she pulls the sheets up to hide herself. There's freaking blood everywhere. My hands were covered. She was covered. Seems like loads. I'm all like WTF, are you okay? I've got a shower, but I'm scared now. She finally confessed to having her baby two days before, and it was postpartum bleeding, totally normal. Yeah, absolutely normal, apparently. No, it effin' wasn't. Everything was trashed, but I laughed because at least no one was dying, I guess. Never did go back. Number five. I went to a college party with four of my roommates, sweet style, so three rooms of two people to a very small living room. While there, we got on the topic of names. My last name is not said the way it's spelled. The vowels are all jumbled. One of the girls there really clamped onto my weird last name and said, back and forth. And we got to talking and I ended up taking her back home. At some point, my sweet roommates came home. Two with girls. Luckily, not my roommate. Well, with four people in our suite and two in the room next to us banging, she very loudly yells out my full name. I suddenly realized I had no clue what her name was. The whole night, we only ever referenced my name. So I do the only logical thing my very inebriated mind can. I yell out my full name. I yelled my own name during intercourse with an audience outside and two people freaking out next door. Everyone in the suite started laughing. To the people next door banging, break out laughing. The girl I'm with, without missing a beat, very, very loudly screams my full name again. I never heard the end of it for the semester and next. My friends always used my full name from then on.
Luckily, the girl thought it was funny, and any time I passed her on campus, she'd make sure to say hi flirtingly and use my full name. I accidentally became a legend thanks to my sweet mates because they thought I had the balls to yell out my own name during intercourse when really, I was just a drunk idiot who didn't have the foresight to learn a girl's name. Number six. Went on a date, and I finally got a want to come up to my place. I had never been to her place, so I was shocked that not only it was a small-sized studio apartment, but she had eight cats there, so we're doing it while eight cats were staring at us the whole time. When we started doing it doggy style, Mr. Lemon jumped on her back. The only reason why I know his name was because as he jumped on her back, she said, Mr. Lemon, get off you naughty boy. Number seven. It was just after I got kicked out of my house when I was 16. Over the next three days at school, words spread pretty fast. Most of my friends melted away, and I got a lot of judgmental looks. Anyway, so I'm trying to couch surf and sleep over with anyone who will allow it. Well, after about two weeks, I've tapped out all my friends, and I'm sleeping in my car, and I get a text just at 1.30 in the morning. It's from this senior girl who was drop-dead gorgeous. She was lonely and wanted to talk. After about 15 minutes on the phone hearing her vent about how hard she has it right now, I hear her go, wait, you aren't X, you are X. Another guy with the same first name. Then she starts crying because she is complaining to the homeless guy and asks if she can do anything to help me. I just say that I really could use chocolate milk. She laughs, and she says she can arrange that. She tells me where she lives, and luckily I'm able to find it. In the late 2000s, cell phones but no internet on them. Well, I have to sneak into her house. And once I'm up in her room, she hands me chocolate milk. I luckily avoid doing a spit take as she stands up, pulls off her shirt and panties, and gives the sexiest pair of doomy eyes I have ever seen. At that point, my brain no longer has dibs on the blood supply, and we go at it. We lay there cuddling for a bit, and she says I have to get out of there before her parents wake up. So I sneak back out and back down to my car. We never spoke of that night to anyone, and I only saw her a couple of times around school before she graduated. I never did get a chance to tell her that that night probably saved my life. So, Brittany, if you remember hooking up with an underclassman back in seven, thank you. Oh, and the chocolate milk was delicious, too. Edit, thank you for the awards and kind words. You are all awesome people. At the suggestion of a couple of you guys, I did find her on Facebook and sent her a message. Let's see if she remembers me. At it, too. She replied back, she did remember me. She actually has a wife now, but she did say it was a fun night. I told her thank you, and she had a bit of a giggle. Then Julie invited me to go bowling with them later this week. So that will be pretty fun. D, edit three, so just got back from bowling. So yeah, they are in a bowling league. I got spanked so hard that they offered to make me dinner sometime. I did bring two chocolate milk for them. They about fell over laughing. Number eight, I was talking to a girl whose snap I found initially on Tinder. Didn't entirely think I hit it off, but there were convos here and there for a few weeks. She seemed down to frick, but said that she couldn't do anything past 11 at night for some reason. After a shift of delivering pizza, I found that a snap was sent out of her riding a dildo. I ask if she's open for me to come over, I doubt it, to go to Waffle House to get my dinner and think it'll just fizzle. But no, she messages back, gives me an address, and I'm off into the boondocks for some fun. The all-star breakfast trots in the back. It's about 11.30 at night, my phone won't charge, and my GPS guides me onwards. After some miscommunication, I found that she lives on a rural property a half hour away in a trailer of her family's house. I parked my car off to the side of the road and snuck into the property as her parents were likely sleeping in the house a stone's throw away. Guided by her on the phone, flashlight leading me in. Legally, I probably could have been shot as a trespasser. Anyway, we freaked for over an hour among the flock of cats on a couch inside the dim trailer, doing just about everything and indulging her kink for people to bite her hard. I showered with her after, popped my uniform back on, and guided my way back to civilization on a dying iPhone battery. Getting breakfast at McDonald's after and never talking to her again? Number nine, went home with a guy during my time at uni. In the throes of the moment, he flung his t-shirt off and into what seemed to be a random corner. We're going at it for a while until suddenly we both stop because we can smell smoke. Being very drunk, we didn't realize what was happening until out of the corner of our eye, something burst into flames, 
Somehow he'd thrown his t-shirt onto a lamp that had been on all night while he was out and was super hot. In his panic, he starts yelling, which causes his three roommates to come running into the room while I'm just there, butt naked, trying to protect what was left of my dignity. Extinguish the fire. All good. I start putting my clothes back on to leave because the moment is ruined and I'm no longer feeling it. He begs me to stay and carry on as if nothing happened while his roommate's still there. I just ran out as quickly as I could. Always careful where I throw my clothes now. Hello, the editor here. That last story was too cool. Like and subscribe for more. Number 10. My best one-night stand story is from a while back when Tumblr was still really corny. There was this guy who posted videos of himself jacking off on his Tumblr, and I would enjoy viewing all of the stuff he posted. I had gotten into some anonymous exhibition stuff at that time and posted a video of myself to my Tumblr. Then I sent him a message telling him how hot I thought he was. Next thing I know, he posts a video of himself jacking off to my video. Super hot. We message a few more times, and it turns out we live in different cities in the same small country. His city in particular is pretty close to the major airport. Next time I'm flying out, I send him a message and tell him I'll be in his area. I stay overnight in a hotel the night before my flight, and we meet up and have a really hot, mostly 69-based hookup. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond my control, I ended up being unable to see him again for a while and lost track of him when Tumblr banished all of the blue material. Number 11. I was fresh out of a high school long-term relationship, dated since high school into the end of university, and all my family and friends were pushing the narrative of having fun and going wild being single since I was always in a relationship. I ended up matching with my first person on Tinder. They were very interested and asked me out on a first date. We ended up going for dinner and then doing it half with a condom and then I got my wits together to put one on for a magnitude of reasons. Unfortunately, I was thinking with my penis instead of my brain. She confirmed she was on birth control prior to doing it. After we finished, she was in a hurry to end the night. I assumed I was a rusty partner. I ended up ending things after the first date since there was no spark. Turns out, exactly three months later, she says that she's pregnant and is going back and forth about an abortion. She ends up not getting the abortion and is sending emotionally charged messages and paragraphs about how I shouldn't abandon my child. I ended up being such a mess over it all that my appendix exploded the following two weeks when she said that she was going to take everything I had if I didn't support our child. A reminder that I'm a fourth-year student in boatloads of student debt, and I'm unemployed. I was lucky enough to smarten up and contact a lawyer. I ended up cutting any and all communications to a bare minimum and simply stated that I was not confident that the child was mine. She continued this charade until I took a paternity test after the birth, and I was thankfully cleared of any paternal connections. Number 12. Cute Guy on Tinder I had moved from the U.S. to Europe and was trying to complete my Men of Europe collection. Chen was from Latvia, so I'm down. We meet for drinks and chat for a while. He's clearly nervous. Once we get a few drinks down, though, he awkwardly kisses the back of my head when I turn to look at something. I said something snarky like, are you going to kiss me for real at some point? He, of course, does, and the world freaking stops. My heart stops. Time stops. We don't stop making out except for long enough to pay, get into and out of the taxi, and get undressed at my place. We must have had intercourse five or six times that night. He cuddled me so tightly while he slept. We did it twice more the next morning. I offer to drive him home, and he accepts. Turns out I was his second only partner. He was 27, hence the bit of nervousness at first. We had intercourse more times in that one night than he had ever had LOL. I casually mentioned that I'd like to see him again. Intercourse to his hot ass. And I genuinely thought he was an interesting dude. He actually texted me a few days later, and we started regularly hooking up. The next year, I received a You were supposed to be a one-night stand coffee mug for Valentine's Day. We are currently building a house together and have been together for over four years, ETA. I never did complete my Men of Europe collection. Number 13. I was traveling to Philadelphia from Kansas for a meeting, halfway through the drive. My boss called me and said that the meeting was delayed and to take a week off. I didn't want to drive home to Texas, so I continued to Philadelphia to explore for a week. I checked into a hotel and drank quite a bit of whiskey before going downstairs to have a cigarette. 
I saw a gorgeous woman sitting outside having a cigarette as well, so I asked if I could sit with her. She was staring at her phone, so I tried to make small talk by asking her if she was from the area. It turns out she was Norwegian and just in the States for training. We talked for a while before exchanging Instagram pages. At that point, her coworker showed up and I excused myself. I was back in my room, completely hammered at this point when she messaged me. I asked her if she wanted to have breakfast the next morning, but she was going home. She offered to have drinks instead. We went to a steakhouse right next to the hotel and had a few drinks before going back to the hotel. We had talked about the TV series, The Office, which she had never foreseen before, so I asked her if she wanted to come watch it. It worked. Two months later, I flew to Oslo to meet her again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I met my wife. At it. I'm glad a lot of you enjoyed our story. I did not expect this to get so much attention, so here is a bit more info and answers to some questions. S. I'm aware this isn't technically a one-night stand. We have been married for three years now. We have both quit smoking cigarettes since then and almost never drink either. Pretty funny, IMO. I moved to Norway a short while after we got married. We are very happy, and I'm so thankful to have found such an amazing woman. She did finally watch The Office about a year ago when she loved it. People have read it. Have you ever done the dirty in school or at the workplace? If so, what happened? Number one. A professor around 50 years old at my old university had a tendency to date and bang his PhD. Students around mid-twenties or so. It was more of a creepy man praise on his employees with father issues than PhD students sleeping with boss to get ahead, though. He ended up marrying one of them, and they now have children together. She remained his PhD student, though, until the day she got her degree. I never had much to do with their research group, but I would imagine that it was a pretty awkward place. The university knew but didn't interfere since everybody involved were adults. Number two, in the late 90s, I got hired to be a phone agent for a distribution and import company. The job was to take incoming orders. It paid $22,000 a year. Within the first week, I began sucking the owner's tool on the regular. He was married. I was a young gay male. I was there less than a month before the marketing director announced her pregnancy and intent to quit when the baby came to be a stay-at-home mom. The owner promoted me to her assistant to learn the job, gave me a raise to $35,000, and when the marketing director left seven months later, I got her job and a raise to 58,000. I continued to blow my boss once or twice a week for five years, and by the time I resigned, I was earning $70,000. What are things like now? Now, I'm married to a dude. I went back to college to earn my PhD. I spent all day reading, writing, and getting high. Number three, er, worked in a warehouse ten years ago. I had the most physical job there, constantly slagging around 130 pounds plus product by hand, so I was reasonably jacked after about four months there. My job was automated at every other warehouse we owned, but the office managers seemed to like looking at me, and I beat the robots in efficiency and accuracy, so she kept me around. She asked for my help moving some heavy crap one day in her office at the end of the day, and I didn't think anything of it. Shoulder was really sore that day, and she noticed me favoring it, so when I was done, she told me she used to work as a massage therapist and offered to help my shoulder. Literally thought nothing of it until three minutes into the massage, her hands were no longer on my shoulder, instead on my junk. She was reasonably attractive, and everyone else had left for the day, so I took advantage of the situation and banked her brains out. Three days later, I got a dollar three an hour raise. The company was four months into a pay freeze for justification. I was beating the robots. We banged a few times a week, and I got an extra few days off. A month paid because she was concerned about my shoulder. A number four. We ran into my boss at a swindler's bar, P.S., their hit and miss. He tried to duck away, but me and my husband are forward. We ran over and said hello to him and his wife. Joked at it fancy seeing you here, etc. Husband gave me the nod, so I got flirty. We went back to his house, husband and his wife in tow. Don't worry. Anyway, it wasn't to get ahead intentionally. I think he's cute. He's keeping in shape for 45, which some dudes just say, screw it all. I have thought about it before. 
This was my first real gig, and the whole shaking bed with boss thing was attractive. Husband already said I could do it, whenever, if he was up for it. I chickened out a few times before this to try, though, didn't know how it would go, didn't know he was a swinger-slash-open relationship. Anyway, turns out he likes stuff in his bum. Husband isn't about that, but his wife strapped up and went behind him while he was behind me. It was fun. We talked over lunch on Monday that it can't happen again, it never happened, and we can never talk about it. Until the holiday party three weeks later when we all went back to our place this time. It's been a few years on and off. Sometimes we sneak away at lunch. Sometimes we get together on the weekend. Hubby and his wife hit it off well, too. I genuinely like adult movies. Had to hide under his desk one time when someone came in. Fortunately, it was only a few minutes. I'd like to say it didn't affect any decisions. And I don't take advantage of it at all. But I think he definitely has my back more now. No pun intended. Been promoted, given more training opportunities, etc. compared to others. At the same time, I asked for more training, more opportunities, and the promotion was within my timeline. But I did get picked of Rebecca. But Becca's a prick who ruins everyone's day anyway. I guess I did get special treatment because I did get Becca moved, so she wasn't near me anymore. Number five. Had a job at a retail store almost ten years ago. From the day of orientation, the trainer-slash-manager had a thing for me immediately. Flirting ensued for a couple weeks until a closing shift when she took me in back, and we used one of the display beds, and a hanky-panky was phenomenal, as she was secretly a freak. My oblivious ass didn't notice the wedding ring until after we hooked up, and she said her husband was cool with it. This turned into me hanging out at her apartment and hooking up every now and again. It never really turned into anything work-wise, just a nice perk of a random job. It just fizzled after I left the job. She's since had a baby and I've got married and had two as well, number six. I was accidentally getting ahead for banging my boss once. I was completely unaware until everything ended and suddenly I got laid off. I had a female boss that had a crush on me and I found her really attractive too. I was 20, she was in her early 30s. It was a call center. I did tech support, and she was the manager of our team. We flirted a little bit here, and they're nothing really more than I did with the customer service girls. There was only one tech support girl, and she had a girlfriend. Then one day we were doing some team lunch, and she asked me to help her go pick up the food. I was just stoked to get out of taking calls. I didn't really notice we left two hours before the lunch until later, hopped in her car, and she said she had to get something at her house before we got the food. We got there, went inside, I said, what do you need to get here? And she said, late, and just basically jumped on me. It was great, I really liked her too. I had no clue she had planned this whole thing to get me out of the office and to her house. She literally could have just said, hey, we should hang out, and I would have done it. I never asked her out because I thought she was out of my league. After that, we hooked up for a while, keeping it quiet because she was my boss, which was fine with me. I was a dorky 20-year-old getting laid regularly. Then one day we were drunk and banging and she started crying. She's sobbing saying, why am I so terrible that the only way I can get a guy is by being his boss and making him bang me? I was shocked and I responded with, I'm not banging you because you're my boss. You're super awesome and super freaking hot. She was a short girl with hard glass figure, little thick, but in all the right places. You were not making me do anything. I wanted you for months before any of this started. Only reason I never asked you out was I didn't want to make it awkward at work. She then started listing all the shit she does at work to keep me close and make me like her and make my life better. I found out I was making more than anyone on my team by a decent margin. I got the best desk that other people apparently were jealous of. I didn't care. I was on a few layoff lists and she made sure to get my name off them. Somebody complained about me to her a lot because I said that's freaking stupid to them when they said something freaking stupid and she just trashed the complaints. I told her, stop doing all that crap. I still like you and you do not have to do any of that at work. Screw if I lost my job, I'd find a new one and I'd probably be happy because we wouldn't have to sneak around. The thing is, I think she was attracted to me because of all this crap she did. I think she felt like she was in control of me. And when she found out I didn't actually care about that crap or feel like I was in debt to her, she ended it. And next time layoffs happened, I was gone. Number seven. Number... Okay, so at my high school, seven years ago, I had a choir teacher. 
He was in his late 20s, and all the choir girls swooned over him. To me, he seemed super normal, for the most part. But then again, I wasn't paying attention to much. I had a math class with one of the girls from CORE, and she would talk about how hot he was and wanted to bang him. I kind of ignored it and put the thought aside. But one day in math, she was like, I banged Mr. M, and I was like, maybe you didn't. And she was like, I swear I did. Now I legit knew something pretty important. She was 16, which is the age of consent in Ohio, but is still fraternization. Honestly, I didn't know what to do with the info. And the way it came out was two weeks later, when her best friend told her she had been banning him too, and they fought over him, and one of the girls tried to blackmail him, and yet everything came out. He was engaged and pretty successful at a young age, and flushed it all down the drain. Number eight. I'm a male and my female manager flirted with me a lot. One day she asked me out to a bar to discuss potential career moves. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I had told her that I love it. My current job then was customer service. If you ever worked in customer service, it sucks taking back-to-back -back calls, so I wanted out. During that outing, she placed her hands on my legs, then went up to my junk. She was a little overweight but somewhat attractive. She was also 12 years older than me. At that time, I was 24 and she was 36. So we went back to my place and we banged like rabbits. We banged here and there for about two weeks. Then she said I was being moved over to internal help desk. And I won't have to deal with customer service anymore. She also paid for all my certs, took me on trips, paid my rent, bought me a laptop and Xbox. One trip, she took me to Vegas and gave me 3K to gamble with. Turns out her family owned the company, so she was really, really rich. Because of her, I've been in IT making above average 10 years. Number nine, booked up with my boss before knowing he was my boss. I knew at the time that he worked within the company, but I didn't realize he would specifically be my boss. I actually really liked him before I realized he was a major craphead as both a boss and regular guy. Quit when he started to blend the two relationships and ended up suing the company when he forged documents in my name saying that if I quit, I was not entitled to any pay from that pay term. Like I said, craphead. Number 10. When I was in college, I worked in a little family-owned restaurant. The owner's wife was the manager, and while she came on to me and we started banning regularly. It was great because I've had to call out whenever I wanted, leave early whenever I wanted, got all the good tables, good shifts, free food, unlimited smoke breaks. But all my co-workers hated me, and since she was married, I know I'm a piece of crap, I was young and stupid, and she was attractive. I knew we weren't going to be together. So when I met someone my own age at school and started dating her, she got really crazy and I ended up getting fired for. I can't even remember now. I was fired for some stupid reason, but it was really because she couldn't bear to see me anymore if I didn't want her. She would text and call me for months afterwards and even showed up at my apartment a few times and also lied saying I got her pregnant. She wasn't. She showed up at my new job and started a huge scene and almost got me fired my first week. So overall, 4 out of 10 wouldn't recommend. Number 11. A guy in university administration was busted for embezzling. He might have got away with it, except his co-worker slash mistress noticed that the guy's co-worker slash wife got a new set of D-cups and demanded the same. So he paid for her surgery too, also with university funds. Rather than bust anyone, they simply pushed the embezzler into retirement and left the two ladies alone. They were also friends. So for years afterwards, these two old crones could be seen showing off their earnings while smoking Virginia Slims, like Bentley Grills on a couple of rusted-out K cars. If you ever wondered where your tuition money goes, well, that happened. Number 12. I was in first-year pre-med and doing fairly well. I had a bio prof that I found extremely attractive, even though she was 55 to my 22, on St. Patrick's Day. We were in the lab doing some cell culturing, and as anyone who has done this knows, there are some substantial wait times involved. This was a five-hour lab. We started a cell culture and finished up with our notes, but didn't have to be back in the lab for about two and a half hours to do the rest of the lab, so my lab partner and I decided to go to the campus bar. Well, I drank two pitchers of green beer and headed back to the lab. I walked in a little tipsy. I'm six, five, and 240 pounds and I see the prof reading a book over her lab table. I walked up to her and started flirting. My lab partner tried to pull me away, I guess worried she would be upset we were drinking or something. 
She starts flirting back, so I ask her if after the lab she wants to come back to the campus bar with us and have some drinks. She says she can't be seen in the campus bar with us, but offers to take me to some other bar nearby. We went to the bar and she bought us a few drinks and then we cabbed back to her place. Banged. Woke up the next morning to people eating breakfast. Her family decided to come over to visit, I guess. Went into the dining room and sat down. People were extremely confused about who the hell I was until she walked into the room and kissed me. Everyone looked really awkward, but man, what do I care? This continued on for a while, and I received an A plus in the course. Went back looking at my work and should have received a B plus or A number 13. My senior year of high school, I started blowing the principal once a week, and in exchange he would fix my grades in attendance, so it looked like I was always there, and I got good grades. In reality, I never did any work, and the only time I would be in school more than once a week was during soccer season. My teachers knew he was messing with my grades. The other students knew he was doing it, but this was a school that was known for the sports, and I was quite a good goalie, so they didn't think we were fooling around. I was a good student before. I was just looking for shortcuts. In college, I was all legit, but I'm a stay-at-home mom now, so I guess you could say I slucked my way into this job too. Number 14. This wasn't anything I did personally, but I worked at a factory back in the 90s and had moved from a department where I worked with all women to a small department where there were just a few guys. When I had time, I would go talk to the ladies I used to work with. They were all way older than me growing up without a mom. It was nice to have that kind of connection with them. One lady was her typical grandmother type, and she didn't even need to work. Her husband was some big shot with the power company, but she wanted something to do. She had frequently talked about how cute a buddy of mine that I work with was. Dude looked like Billy Ray Cyrus, and this was the early 90s, and I live in the South. My buddy was heavy in debt because he bought a truck and a boat and jet skis and had a horrible addiction to nightclubs. He would literally take out a cash advance on his credit cards within the club. We made $9 per hour, and he lived like he was a CEO. So at his request, I facilitated the time and place for them to meet up outside of work. The next day he shows up looking pale and sickly. He was a pretty tanned guy, and walked over to me and said in almost a whisper, Well, long pause. I banged her. He was quiet most of the day. Highly unusual for him. His end game was money, and it paid off. He steeled himself and continued meeting up with her for shaking beds for close to a year, and she paid off all his debt and constantly gave him cash, which he promptly gave to lap dancers. I don't even think she cared as long as he kept giving her what she wanted. I'm not sure I could have done it myself. Number 15. Senior year of high school, our Spanish class took a two week trip to Mexico. One week was learning and the other was an Acapulco learning. Our teacher was mid-twenties, and one night me and several students snuck out to the club. I went to the bathroom and saw her coming out. Both of us hammered. I said, if you don't tell, I won't tell, thinking only of saving myself. She started crying. Life was over, etc. Now that I'm older, I realize she was a really emotional drunk. Anyway, we went out back so she could calm down. Somehow, she ended up rubbing me, and at that point, all thoughts went out the window. We banged by the dumpster of essentially a Pedro O'Horny's. That was the second of five nights there. We banged three more times. Last night, she had a realization of we can't do this. I said I know and I wouldn't cause trouble. We had our fun. Both were consenting adults. She was also a very generous lover. Like, not to get detailed, but that was the best I was ever taken care of. Crappy person, because when we got off the flight... She ran up and hugged her fiancé like nothing had happened. The rest of that year, no matter what assignment I turned in, I got 100%. I wasn't going to argue. Ran into her a few years after college, and she told me I still held the record for the worst written Spanish paper in her class. I googled translated the whole thing out of laziness, but I got 100% on it. She tried to rekindle a couple of times. I never obliged. She's one of those grass-is-always-greener-slash-lives-in-the-past types. Number 16. My elder cousin moved into our house while I was in high school. He strikes up a relationship with my math teacher at the time. Suddenly I go from a C student to an A student when my cousin said he was going to break up with her. 
I pretty much begged him not to for a few more weeks until the end of the school year. He kept it going for a few more weeks, and I got an A. Great guy. Number 17. Started sleeping with my manager after one month on the job. Didn't do it to get ahead. Just happened one night after getting drinks at a company event. She was 31 and I was 22. I ended up getting better ships because of it. But once the office gossip began, I stopped it. She moved on to another coworker who was a friend of mine, but I didn't mind because I moved on to another coworker who was more attractive in my opinion. After leaving that job and starting a new one, I began dating my new manager after a month. And we've been together for almost two years now. We don't work together anymore, but when we did, I got the best schedule. Other people were a little pissed off, understandably, but the head boss didn't care because he was openly dating someone below him and giving her preferential treatment, so he couldn't really say anything. Number 18. One of my best friends began a physical and emotional relationship with our amazingly hot art teacher. She was single and 27 at the time. He was 18 and entering senior year. Some of us knew, and many more suspected, but it was kept quiet from administrators for the entire year. The next year, she came back with my friend's last name. The school never missed a beat. A couple of years later, they had a kid. A few years after that, they divorced. My friend is now no more as he was in a car accident in Tennessee, and the teacher is now retired and I still see from time to time. We have had the opportunity to discuss the affair over cocktails. She is fine with everything, and their son has grown into a great guy. He looks and acts just like his father. She never remarried. Number 19. When I was 19, I got my first apartment. My landlord in her mid-40s was always extra friendly with me, but I didn't think much of it. On moving in, say she came by, helped me unpack, gave me her personal number, and said if I need anything at all to text or call. A few weeks passed of us texting and flirting. She mentions one night that she's bored, and I tell her to come hang out and we'll watch a movie. She comes knocking about an hour later with a six-pack of beer. Next thing I know, we're upstairs pumping uglies. And after that day, I never paid another penny for rent. Number 20. So I'm one of about four girls working in a mostly male workplace. This is in my story, but I'm roommates with the girl who went through or is currently going through this. B started about two years ago, and right off the bat, everyone knew something was up. Barely legal. No experience in our workplace, but got one of the better jobs here. And she stayed there. Our raises are based mainly on how well you can do your job and how many different positions you can work on our line. But somehow, even though she could only do one job and wasn't particularly good at it, she kept getting raises out the ass. No one else could prove anything. But we all kind of figured she was shaking beds with our supervisor who was married and twice her age. Neither of them admitted to it, but the raises kept coming. Her performance stayed pretty crappy, and she basically got away with murder as far as attendance slash accountability went. Everyone else treated her like shit and tried to get her to quit. Fast forward to about eight months ago when B's relationship with our boss went south. They broke up, and he's been trying to get her fired for about anything and everything he can think of. The catch is that she has documented proof of their relationship, which she's planning on sending to his wife, as well as our boss's bosses, if he really does manage to get her fired. So now she's basically got an ironclad position where we work and is making considerably above skill level money-wise. I'd say it worked out fairly well for her. Number 21. I was a retail manager once and hooked up with one of my part-timers. She would stay late with me every Wednesday and we'd bang in the stock room while doing stock and inventory. Outside of the extra hours, I never gave her much special treatment because she was already a pretty good employee. However, when it came time for her to move up, I made sure to throw my seniority in there to get her a manager position at a new store. Number 22. Used to blow my boss every Thursday. We banged once. It was just a part-time retail gig, and I got a bigger raise than my more deserving co-workers around the time it started. Actually felt pretty bad about that. I wasn't a lousy employee by any means, but my one co-worker seriously busted her ass and got a smaller raise but he always let me go home early if we weren't super busy. That was nice. Number 23. My situation is quite the opposite. I was the manager at a sushi restaurant, and one of my employees was constantly flirting with me. It eventually moved on to touching me. 
I didn't mind because I was extremely attracted to him. Not to mention I was in a horrible and toxic relationship. So I let him touch me and I flirted back. Because of this, I would let him get off easier than other employees without really realizing it. Eventually, my boyfriend and I broke up. And the first thing I did was make him stay after work with me to clean up, which he did. And that night, two hours after the whole plaza was closed, we banged in the office. And we did this a couple of times before I quit and found a better job and a stable relationship. Number 24. Many years ago, I used to run extremely popular clubs in the downtown core. Promotion teams, typically 500 to 1,000 people waiting outside to get in. Club would charge 20 cover. I would charge 20.50 to skip line. At least once a week, girls would offer BJs, etc. To get in without paying. Blew my mind, no pun intended, to see people go solo to party. Moral of the story, try to not meet your wife slash significant other at a popular club. Number 25. An old manager of mine had a thing about women wearing bright lipstick. He offered to pay me an extra three per hour if I just wore bright red lipstick to work each day, which I figured was harmless and cost me nothing. I was a minor at the time, and he never made any adult comments towards me or made me uncomfortable, but it was strongly implied to be a fetish thing. Apparently, he made the same deal with an older co-worker of mine and also offered 100 for a picture of her feet. What was the best climax you've ever had? Number one. Backpacking across Europe when I was 23, I met another traveler and we hit it off. Since we were staying in hostels, there was not much privacy, so we didn't get much more than some making out after a few drinks. I could tell by how she kissed and that she had a tongue stud and a pierced chest that she was a bit of a freak. So we decided to splurge on a private hotel room one day in Belgium, and it was the best money I ever spent. As soon as we got into the room and closed the door, it started. I was in another world for about 30 minutes and she loved it the entire time. Watching her smile while she played the skin flute was one of the best parts. I am now 40 and this easily remains my best experience that I can vividly recall. The best part about it was her attitude. She wanted to please me and knew just how to do it and was very happy with the results. Number two. I don't know if this is the best ever, but certainly the best in more than a decade. I'm almost 50. The last year I got divorced after almost 15 years of marriage. Fortunately, it was in good terms. It was a mutual decision. Other than a daughter, we hadn't had much, if anything, in common for quite some time. Also, for different reasons, we hadn't been intimate pretty much since after our daughter was born, almost 10 years before. I never cheated on my wife, though. I must admit the temptation was there a few times, but I was able to resist it. After finding my own place, I didn't feel like dating let alone starting a relationship. I wanted to be alone and have to figure things out. This doesn't mean that I fell into a depression and wouldn't leave my flat. Quite the opposite. Fortunately, friends encouraged me to go out, to be among people. As one of them said, I did just that. Now I could go to the cinema, on a hike, or to the pub whenever I felt like it, without having to let anyone know where I was going, what time I was coming back, or whether I was coming back. Which takes me to the answer to the question. It was a Monday evening in late May last year. I was going home from the pub. It was still relatively early, about 10. I got to where I took the bus back home with time to spare, and I went to grab a bite at one of the pizza shops at the metro station. Since it was raining, instead of eating at the bus stop, I stayed on the stairs that go to the street. I was almost finished when a girl much younger than me, let's call her V, came out of the pizza shop and started talking to me. After exchanging a few words, she invited me to join her and her guy friend for some pizza and wine. I agreed. I could always take the next bus, I told myself. My two new friends were fun. We were having a great time talking and sharing stories while drinking cheap wine and eating pizza bread. Somewhere around 11, the woman running the pizza shop announced she wanted to go home. And V grabbed a bottle of wine from the fridge, paid the bill and told me, Hey, I live next door. Why don't you come over? We can have some more wine at my place. At that point, I was at the level of drunkenness where you can still speak, even in a foreign language. I'm a long-time immigrant in this country and move with hardly any trouble, the same level where everything looks like a great idea. Otherwise, I don't think I would have accepted the invitation, but I did. I started to get a bit confused when we were on the lift, and the guy friend, put his hand on my shoulder and said, 
Hey, Maxito Benito, it was nice meeting you. Hope we can hang out again. V has my number. Then he added something like, Don't worry, mate. It's all cool. Before grabbing the bike and leaving, the lift got to Vi's door. Vi invited me into her flat, went to the kitchen to fetch glasses and a bottle opener, and told me to serve the wine and wait a few minutes while she walked her dog. So there I was, in a stranger's home, unable to fully process what was happening. Things became very clear when she came back, had a sip of wine and said she was having a shower. Her brother. After she came out of the shower and walked into the room bare, still drying herself, she told me I could also have a shower if I wanted. Which I did. I also realized she was pretty hot at that moment. After the shower, I also went into the room bare. We drank some wine, talked, and started to cuddle until we both fell asleep. Must have been five in the morning when the noise from the street woke me up. I was also feeling cold and went to shut the window. Vi woke up too and picked up the conversation we were having before we passed out and before I could say anything. She started to give me a sloppy and my mind went blank for a second. It was as if a voltage surge had short-circuited it and the system had to be rebooted. She called in sick at work and I stayed with her in bed until noon or so. When I got home on Tuesday afternoon, I still couldn't believe what had uh, happened to me. I'm still in touch with V. We meet at least once a month to hang out, go to the pub or go to the cinema. Sometimes we end up at her place, but not always. She's really cool. Number three, when my wife was pregnant, she was really sick for the first, like, three or four months. When she started to feel better, she was very flirty and touchy, but I hadn't really been expecting intimacy, considering she had always been sick up to this point. I got home from work one day, kissed her, talked for a minute, and went to hop in the shower. She comes in and joins me, which wasn't abnormal. We shower together often. To cut a long story short, we rolled around and had fun on the bathroom floor. We hadn't had fun in months, and with no rubber, I exploded. I've never been able to have two in a row like that before, and I haven't since. It was insane. I know a lot of people may not agree, but for me, as a man, there is nothing more attractive than a pregnant woman. For me, it's the ultimate symbol of femininity. And those curves. I had a hard time keeping my hands off my wife when she was pregnant, and I was fortunate that she had a stronger desire for fun while she was pregnant. Now I even find the changes her body went through to be extremely sexy as well. They're her battle scars, her signs of what she was willing to go through to bring her child into the world. The transformation to motherhood. I know most of society doesn't agree, but I don't care. It makes her sexier, in my opinion. Twice in a row. I wonder if that is how you make twins. Number four, I met a guy who was gentle but rough at the same time. He was perfectly sized for me, so he'd already felt better than any other man had in the past. But the best thing about him was that he just knew what to do. I didn't have to tell him anything. I am a big girl, and I'm usually forced to be in positions that make it hard for me to focus on the moment. He was the first and only man to ever do such wonderful things to me. I miss him. I'd marry him if I could. He's not my ex. Intimacy with my ex was not bad, to say the least. It was my first relationship and being in love with him is the bulk of what made it really amazing for me. But once he started cheating and I became insecure, it went downhill. I realized physical relations really do feel best when you're in love with a person. He didn't put in this much effort at all and had convinced himself that he knew women's bodies better than any man. He was fairly well educated in this subject, I will say, but he didn't listen to constructive criticism and thought that all of our bodies are the same, so he used the same technique no matter what. The sky was just a couple of months ago. He was visiting my city for the weekend and we met on Tinder, but he lives like five hours away normally and works 12-hour shifts 67 days out of the week, plus his army job. We've tried keeping in touch, but it just hasn't worked out. This just reminds me of what some people would say, the good ones are always rare and hard to find. Number five. It was the worst moment of my life. I joined the crew team during my freshman year of college, my first 2K test, essentially sprinting for eight minutes. To test, we lined all the ergs up in a row and all started at the same time. I got on the erg and started pulling super hard, not pacing myself at all. I get about two minutes in and start to get super lightheaded and have an intense warmth in my bean. I started to panic as I realized the inevitability of what was going to happen. 
I peeked so hard that I spasmed off the erg with my feet still strapped in. All I saw was bright white. My ears were ringing, and I'm pretty sure I whizzed myself a little too. The contractions were so powerful that they shook my entire body. It was a sensation that transcended intimacy. I ruined the 2K test. The girls gathered around me, thinking I was having a seizure. I was crying out of shame and embarrassment. I'm always super careful to pace myself now. My biggest fear is that this will happen again when I'm actually in the shell. To clarify, an urge is a rowing machine and a shell is a boat in the water. We train on ergs over the winter when the water is frozen. Number six. I went to Canada for a dance trip. I stayed with a Canadian massage therapist who had semi-recently left at the altar. She was in her late thirties and I was in my early twenties. Well, we danced together and had a bunch of fun flirtation and physical energy that night. We got back to her place and she massaged me all over. When she got me relaxed, she proceeded to use her oils to give me the best handy of my entire life. Not just a warm, pre-fun handy. This was a fantastic technique that put my years of practice to shame. As an added bonus, she didn't want anything. Due to her romantic and emotional state, she really just wanted to feel like she was attractive and to make someone feel good. So despite my push to return the favor, she just wanted to cuddle after. Not only was it a great physical experience, but emotionally it was nice to make a friend and have no strings attached physical interaction. Number seven. This happened sometime last year while I was taking a shower with my then girlfriend. This was a very normal activity for us. We would often do things for each other, such as lathering up, getting those hard-to-reach spots and scrubbing dead skin off our backs. One time, I was rubbing Lush's magic crystal body scrub on her when, unintentionally, my cheeky hormonal self got both hands on her behind. Keep in mind that we haven't had intimacy in about two weeks due to a combination of my being away on a business trip and the fact that she had also just finished her midterms in time of the month. It wasn't long before my Johnson gloriously rose from the ashes with the tune of the star-spangled banner in the background, accompanied by the sounds of bald-headed eagles screeching in pursuit of freedom. We teased each other but did not press further, as we had made reservations for a nice dinner at this Italian place downtown. Fun can wait. When we exited the bathroom, she went to get her makeup stuff while I went into the living room, as my nice clothes were still in the suitcase from the aforementioned business trip. Upon returning to the bedroom, I found her laying in the bed. Hey you, I said as I explored her. I mean, I was super frisky and edged up too, but it had taken us two weeks to land that reservation at this Italian restaurant. We nervously glanced at the cheap Ikea clock on the wall and said, You have to leave in fifteen. I'd make it, but I'm not sure if she will. That said, I teased her a bit, and she complained. What are you doing? Please, just do it. I continued performing this hedonistic torture method several more times, but stopped when I realized that both of us were starting to get sweaty. Uh-oh. I grabbed us a couple of fresh towels, hastily retreated, and reassured her that we would continue this later, after several helpings of clam, linguine, and red wine. We were finally in the car and on the freeway, but the teasing did not stop. She convulsed, came to a halt, squeaked out a half laugh, and tussled her hair, feeling pleased with herself. Feeling envious and motioned for her to stop, she agreed and started, and my body already started shaking like I had just been shocked by the leader of an electric gem in Pokemon. The fertile projectile that was launched could only be rivaled by the 4th of July fireworks set off from the backyard of a Desert Storm veteran in Houston, Texas. Pure goddamn ecstasy. We were both in disbelief from our odd journey, and until the end of our relationship, we could never recreate the magic from that night. By the way, the pasta and wine were really good, and the stain was still there when I sold the car. Number 8. I work nights as security for a hospital. I've been running games with a nurse there for a while, taking lunches together, and just generally making a nuisance of myself. After a few weeks of dog pursuit, she asked me to take her somewhere private for dinner one night. I used my keys to let us into the empty rehabilitation clinic. The clinic is fronted by almost all tinted glass, and you can see right out into the street, but not vice versa when the lights are out. I take her to one of these adjustable padded platforms they have, and before we get started, 
She produces an ace bandage and asks for me to loosely tie her wrists behind her. Up to that point, my experience was always pretty vanilla, both in style and location. The combination of her giving me control of her, being on the clock, and the thrill of finding a location that would lead to us being in big trouble was so hot that I peaked like never before or since. Before anyone came at me, she was very insistent and thorough about sanitizing the area after. She's a medical professional, after all. Number 9. My first ever frenzy was from F. Fun. The relationship was still new and my nerves were getting in the way of achieving full stiffness. Even when I got excited, it never reached a state of frenzy. Even after hours, and it was very frustrating for both of us. I was panicking so much, and my significant other was inexperienced as well, so she didn't know what to tell me and even sometimes thought it was her fault. Luckily, I asked the right people, and their advice helped me relax and all was well afterward. I learned to relax after some advice one day, and that night I finally reached my first ever peak. It still took some time for me to get it up and reaching it took an hour, but when I finally did, and I remember this very clearly, even though it was years ago, I felt high, the good kind, like I was floating for a good five minutes. It was so smooth sailing after that, even nine years later, number ten. So, there are these two different times with the same girl. First, we were dating, and we did it like eight times, on a glorious afternoon. By the end of it all, I was dry. The eighth time and the last was something that I felt never happened again. I felt like the soul left my body during that last time. Second, we were already married for two years, and suddenly, on a normal scheduled day, we both had very busy work lives at the time. I started to feel the sensation of a peak with every movement I made. This lasted the entire time, until the very end. It also never happened again. Number 11. I once went out with a friend, his girlfriend, and her friend, and I really liked her. But we ended up all getting really hammered at a few bars. And then we all went back to his place afterward. She had been flirting with me all night, but I wasn't super into it. I was pretty hammered and said I was going to bed in his spare room. I went upstairs and closed the door. Literally, what seemed like two seconds later, she opened the door bare. She had the biggest, most perfectly shaped chest I'd ever seen, and she'd even had a reduction. She absolutely schooled me for what seemed like about three to four hours. It felt like I was in an adult film set. I'd say it was the most crazy frenzy I ever had. We met up again the following night and it was the same, but we left that room and never crossed paths again. This is why people always say, don't knock it until you've tried it, and it's a good thing this dude did. Number 12. It was the first time I used an adult toy. I'd been intimately active for about eight years at that point and had what I thought were frenzies, a random really good feeling that quickly passed. This was so much different, and I instantly knew. It felt like a wave of electricity was coursing through my body. Thankfully, it didn't stop, so the frenzy lasted for a long time. I want to say maybe one to two straight minutes. I was completely wiped afterward, which had never happened to me before. Although now I know how to get the big one, as I call it. That first one was the best, just for that reason. Because it was the first. Thanks for watching. Check out our binge-worthy playlist in the description down below and see you in the next one. What did your friend do that accidentally turned you on? Number one, played porn on their laptops. There were like six guys watching a gangbang and it was really weird. Number two, I found restraints on his bedpost from an encounter with an ex and made fun of him. Then asked him how they work and instead of telling me, he proceeded to put the ankle restraints on me and threw my legs over his neck and showed the different ways that he could screw me. I've known this dude since I was a kid and he's family to me, but I instantly wanted to drop my panties and say, screw our childhood, let's ruin a friendship. And that's how I found my kink in college. Number three, in high school, we were doing some kind of class project in class, three males and three females. I am one of the males. All six of us are sitting across from each other at the same table with the chairs pushed really close together. I'm in the middle, and the girl sitting across me is pretty cute. I was never interested in her in any romantic way since she was a good friend, but she's cute. She seems to be flirting with the guy next to me, and everything is going well. All of a sudden, this girl starts rubbing her legs against mine. This goes on for like ten whole minutes and a few more, and I would have nutted right there. 
It wasn't anywhere near my crotch or anything too sexual, but she was definitely moving her leg back and forth against my leg, and I just couldn't concentrate or do anything productive for the life of me. I just hope I didn't make any weird faces. Now, from the context, you would think that she was aiming for the guy next to me with who she was flirting, and I still think the same thing. As I said that, we were friends, but neither of us have any kind of attraction to each other. Regardless, that was still such a great feeling. I may or may not have a leg fetish now, and I may or may not have jacked off to that same experience multiple times. Number four, three years ago, we were on a school trip, and we all went to the woods, and I went with my friend to the deep woods. We were all just boys, and we got a little lost. She went out alone to look for me, and when she found me, she just hugged me and whispered in my ear, God damn it, don't do this again. What the hell would I have told your parents? And my dumb freaking A just laughed and shrugged and pretended like my heart didn't explode that day. Well, anyway, three years later, I confessed, and I'm sleeping right beside her right now, and she has no idea I'm writing this. Number five. We were in some math class in high school, and she was tutoring me mid-class. She was leaning over next to me as I sat down, and she had her hand on my back. She was almost whispering into my ear to figure out this problem. Something about her voice was so soothing and arousing, it was very sensual, and I still think about it often. Nothing ever happened with her. We grew apart after school. Something very similar happened at my job recently, though, so it brought me back. Number six. A group of us went to a fireworks display, and during the usual, louder, bigger finale fireworks, she jumped, grabbed my arm tight, and didn't let go. I'm not sure what happened inside of me, but yep, that did it. That's some anime stuff right there. Now we just need the part where she confessed, but the fireworks were too loud and you couldn't hear it. Number seven. I offered him a sip of my drink and he made intense eye contact with me as he slowly put the straw in his mouth and took a nice long sip. I found it kind of weird to be turned on so much by just him sucking a straw since I don't have a D. We've been dating for over two years now. Number eight. He and I were watching a movie when he gave me a hug. While hugging, he gently ran his hands up and down my back. He didn't mean anything sexual with it. I, on the other hand, have a very sensitive back and was severely turned on by it. The next day, he made fun of me for being ticklish. I then admitted to the truth about that. Needless to say, he did it again later. We've been dating for a year now, getting close to two. Number nine. Multiple things. First, at a party, he danced with me and lifted me up in the air. I'm not thin, and not many people tried this with me. Then on a trip we made with friends, his cousin made a tent using sheets and a bunk bed. We went inside to read manga on his phone. He put his arms around me so we both could see the screen. Before anyone asks, he wasn't into me back then, but now we've been together for nearly four years. Number 10, we were neighbors. She just kicked out her ex-boyfriend and we lost power due to an ice storm. The power was restored later, but her heat wasn't working right. She called it in, but the maintenance people were busy with calls to fix the heat in other units, too. We were hanging out at my place, watching movies and basking in my heat, though it was still chilly. We were all still sharing a blanket on the couch, snuggled up together and drinking whiskey. She passed out on the couch, so I put an extra blanket on her and went up to my room. About an hour later, she walks up into my room and just falls into bed next to me. It gets under the cover, snuggles up to me, and then says, I'm cold and passes out. I don't know, maybe I just felt wanted, and that she came to me for comfort. We didn't hook up or anything, but the next morning she woke up, made me breakfast, and went back to her apartment to get her heat fixed. Number 11. Guy here. Senior year of high school. A guy dares me to give a massage to my girl best friend when she sits down. She sits down and I start giving her a shoulder massage, which I've been told I'm very good at. She lets out a couple of soft moans and completely relaxes. I had never really been attracted to her until then. Then I stopped and she slumped back, tilted her head back so I was looking at her upside down, and she said, don't stop. So, uh, that was some feelings that I felt. Since this got a fair amount of views, nothing ended up coming out of it. She had a boyfriend at the time who was jealous of me for quite some time, according to her. We haven't talked much in recent years, but we're having dinner and catching up either this weekend or next. Depends on if I have to work this weekend or not. 
I have this feeling for her, but I'm not sure those feelings are strong enough or worth ruining our 18-plus-year friendship. Number 12. I'm terrified of being choked, having people touch my neck, etc. After an incident where I was attacked and awed, I thought that I would spend my whole life with that being really serious, never ever touch my neck kind of thing, which it was for several years. Until my best friend, who's the six was seven monstrosity of a human, playfully leaned their hand on my neck. Yep, so it turned out that I just needed to be someone I trust in a non-sexual setting to unlock the ability to be turned on via neck being touched. God damn it, brain, so close, but so far. Number 13, the girl was really affectionate and hugged everyone. When she got to hugging me, I was really awkward, so I admitted that I had never hugged a girl before. She said, and I quote, It's fine, I'll be your first time, and all my friends were laughing at how that sounded, and the high school me was rock hard. Number 14. When I was a freshman, and taking a 6 a.m. class, and going to practice an hour after school, she let me take a nap with her leg as a pillow and played with my hair. That was so relaxing. Also, another girl got drunk and nibbled on my ear, and I was like, oh, shoot. Number 15, my best mate's girlfriend and I got along pretty well. I got along great with her parents. I was sitting on the couch at her parents' house watching the motorsport with her dad. She sat next to me and fell asleep with her head on my shoulder. It was okay until I could hear that little cute little breathing noise coming from her. My mate broke up with her a few months or so later, and I was far too dumb to pick up on the many, many signals from her. Number 16. Moved into an apartment where my roommate was one of my best friends who happened to be a girl. Completely platonic relationship for 12 years at that point. Six months later, I'm stoned out of my mind, as per usual, when I got home from work late at night, and she asked me to lie down in her bed with her, because she had woken up from a nightmare. So I laid down on top of the blanket, and she fell asleep. I had intended to get up and go to my own room and watch cartoons with the rest of my high, but I ended up getting really comfy and falling asleep. The next morning, she woke me up by lightly scratching on my back, but little did she know that the nails on my back were an instant turn on. Never had feelings for each other, never did anything, even remotely physical, nothing, just boom, instant wood jokingly told her to cut it out or it's gonna get awkward and she didn't know what i meant at first until i rolled over and she saw the tent in my pants we discussed the idea of us being together or even just having casual sex between friends and one year later i married her no regrets not a single letter married my best friend because she accidentally made me horny number 17 we were going to a picnic with our classmates this was in 10th grade i'm doing my second year of college now and we were in this deluxe, gigantic bus. We were actually playing hide-and-seek in the bus. Anyway, so while we were playing, I crossed my leg and sat down under one of the seats, and a female friend of mine came to the spot and asked if she could hide with me. I agreed, and she lied down and kind of placed her head on my lap, but her head was exactly on my D, and it kind of turned me on because I was trying really hard not to have a heart on and creep her out. Luckily, my efforts were not in vain. I still keep in touch with her and actually mentioned this to her a few months before COVID hit. She admitted that though she knew she was on my penis, she didn't want to move because she thought that would make me feel awkward. We had a good chuckle and we're still friends. Number 18. I was having a drink with an old friend a long time ago. At some point, after a brief pause, she looked at me, smiles, and says, You're very handsome, you know? I got a little quiet and awkward, and we carried on drinking and chatting, and soon it was like nothing had happened. But from that moment on, I never failed to notice the striking blue of her eyes, and my feelings became slightly complicated and conflicted. It didn't last, of course, but it's just bizarre how a compliment can change a perception, especially for us men who receive so few. We barely speak anymore. We're both married, and she has a son. Of course, I love my wife with all that I have and all that I am, but there is always that memory. I've never forgotten it, and imagine I never will. Number 19. Probably wasn't accidental, but I was drinking with a friend of mine one night and she was just ranting about our boyfriend at the time. I'd always been interested in her, but I also respected it when she got into relationships. Even though I didn't really like the guys that she was with. She said that she was going to go to bed and that I should crash on the couch since I had been drinking. 
She started stretching in front of me and said that she always stretches before bed. Now, I wouldn't have questioned this, but she was sticking her butt right in front of my face and was getting into some really suggestive positions on the floor. She went to bed and the next day thanked me for letting her vent. A lot of people told me that she was trying to hook up and I shouldn't have gone for it, but she had been drinking and had a boyfriend, so there were two red flags for me to not even try. Number 20. Sat down beside each other. She laid her head down onto my lap. I went into panic mode and promptly jumped in my seat, making her sit back up. Number 21. I was the friend. She had hosted a party with our friends, and we had been on the same beer pong team for a bit. And I had been jokingly giving her a hard time about missing some of the shots, to which she responded by saying that she'll slap me. An inside joke, it wouldn't have been hard. I stared at her. And when she raised her hand to do so while maintaining my gaze, I quickly grabbed her by the wrist and held on for a second before letting go. She quite literally said that turned me on, and then asked if I heard what she said. I said yeah, and continued playing. Number 22. A friend of mine used to sit on my lap when we would run out of chairs hanging with other friends, and she would move her hips to find a comfy spot, but god damn it was hard on me to find a way that my little John wouldn't poke her in the butt. This did happen a couple of times, which would be followed by her giving me the smile and shifting just a little bit more and saying something coy. Another time was when we were hanging out while I still had a really loose tooth. She was getting annoyed with me pushing it with my tongue, so she pushed me up to my bed, straddled me, and reached her hand into my mouth to tear my tooth out. From the sound being made, my groaning and the bed shaking, my dad came up to make sure that we were all right. Then he saw a sweaty, here on top of me, face right up to mine, and thought that we were about to do it. After she used that as a distraction enough to yank my tooth out, I had to go downstairs to stop the bleeding and manage to explain to him what had happened, to which he looked mildly disappointed, and I think his headcanon to this day is that I had sex with her, or at least some lights over the clothes action. Number 23. So I'm friends with a girl who does judo at a national level, and we get along like a house on fire and we have a day mooching around town, going to coffee shops, etc., and then we go back to her place while we wait for, to be honest, I don't remember what we were waiting for, my parents, maybe. So, anyway, her house is in the final stages of a do-over, and she set up one of the rooms with her judo mats. She asked me if she can practice some throws on me. I agree. I am swiftly pummeled into the floor several times. I don't know if it was the close combat or if it was the pummeling, but I am super into it and there's genuinely a couple of times in there where I thought about kissing her or making some other move. But I chicken out. I don't want to ruin the friendship. I walk away with some small bruises, a bit of a boner, and months later the realization that, wait, was she trying to make a move on me? Years later, I still can't tell. Number 24, have this friend of mine. One day at home, while we were drinking with some other friends, she just started singing. At that moment, I looked at her, and I didn't just see my friend. I saw a very attractive young woman. I sometimes still see that moment when I look at her, but I shake the thought away. About a year ago, I had the same thing with my girlfriend before we got together. I had that thing for her for quite a while. But then this happened that one night, when she drove me home from a festival at like four in the morning, and she started to sing randomly to a song that I happened to like very much at the time— and it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever heard. I must have stared at her because suddenly she stopped and asked if I stared at her because I liked it, or if it was because of something else. So then I told her that I really liked her singing, which she obviously denied because she thought her singing was horrible. We said goodbye, and then I thought about what happened for the next few days. A week later, I decided to ask her out, and we are still together one year later. Number 25. When I worked in this restaurant, the head chef was the type who was very particular. His way was always right, and he was bossy. But he was also super nice and funny, so it balanced out. He essentially just had a very dominant personality. I would call the garlic toast garlic bread, because I didn't see much of a difference. And while we were rushing, that's the name that came out of my mouth. It was never the kind of thing to bicker back and forth, so we had fun and laughed with it and it never had any actual tension. 
But one day I yelled for garlic bread and he was holding it in his tongs and is about to give it to me when he says, call it garlic toast. I say, okay, I will. When he goes, no, say it now, call it garlic toast. I want to hear you say it. So I start giggling and say, okay, to the chef where he once again looks in a very dominant way and says, no, say it. Once I cracked and laughed and then said it, he smiled and said, good girl, number 26. We were both drunk at a house party and I playfully pulled her hair to get her attention. She gaffed and then gave me a happy little moan. What made it hotter was the way that she gripped her seat of her chair with both of her hands and encouraged me to do it again. So I ended up playing with her hair all night. I still think about her gorgeous, bliss-filled face, though, sadly, we never took it any further. A friend of mine playfully wrapped my ponytail around his fist and gave it a tug, and it woke up something inside of me. I couldn't help but make the sound and look at him with the most obvious bedroom eyes. We were sitting at our crowded lunch table, too, and the guy, who is the most shameless person ever, actually blushed for the first time I can remember. Then our friend proceeds to tease the crap out of us. Number 27. Around 2002-ish, I was playing Counter-Strike on my computer. When suddenly, my next-door neighbor just came into my room and sat on my lap while hugging and breathing down my neck. I'm sure that she could feel my growing enthusiasm. After a lot of deaths, I finally decided to quit the game and just hug her back. After a while, I started to wonder if she had fallen asleep or something. Turns out that she just had a bad day and all she needed was a hug. But that breathing down my neck, yes! Number 28. I had a friend lick my face as a joke because she was one of those girls that thought they were quirky or different for acting like a weirdo or something. It was like freshman year of high school, if I remember correctly. It was definitely strange as hell, but Jesus Christ, did she awaken something inside of me? I wasn't even particularly attracted to her. I was just licked, and I felt the arousal creeping in, and I'm standing here like, oh, God, oh, freak, no, don't get a boner, freak, no, 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 no. Number 29. This was five years back in high school. A female friend and I were putting a group together for a science project. We met up after school at her place because no one was home and she didn't want to drive over to my place. As I was sitting on my laptop and reading, she scratched my forearm with her nails to get my attention. Man, her look in her eyes and the scratches, I still remember that. Number 30. Not very subtle, but she spontaneously pulled her pants down to tan her legs while we were chilling outside. When she suggested doing it, I was like, oh, sure, assuming that she had shorts on underneath. Ha <laughs> ha. Nope, Victoria's secret panties. I laughed and said, dude, we're outside. But in truth, God, it got me turned the hell on. She wasn't the brightest friend, but that's what made hanging out with her so fun. Man, I miss pre-COVID times. Number 31. I was once speaking to this customer and I couldn't understand her because of her thick Russian accent. So my coworker stepped in and started speaking fluent Russian. And I swear it was the hottest thing ever. I definitely have a thing for accents because that stuff was putting me in some kind of mood. Number 32. There was this one incident where I and this pretty girl went out for a long drive. We drank a bit, and on the return she was tired and put her head onto my lap while I was driving. Pretty sure she felt my D number 33. I was sitting shotgun and she was messing with me in the chair behind me. Stuff like grabbing my shoulders, pinning me to the seat by shortening the seat belt, and stroking my hair. I was beat red but I didn't tell him to stop. We're dating now. He's the sweetest person I ever dated and I feel really lucky. Number 34. A few years ago, me and a friend were goofing around making flower crowns on a grassy knoll. She decides to roll down, said Knoll, and as she does, her shirt rides up and I can see the sun reflecting off of that little line of hair that goes down from the belly button. I swear. Time stopped and all of my blood vessels woke up at once. The sun was shining brighter, the flowers smelled sweeter, and it was as if I briefly stepped into a more perfect pocket dimension. It was then that I knew I was definitely not straight. Number 35. I was off from college for about a week, and I came back and a friend of mine who I hung out with every day ran up and hugged me. But as she hugged me, she jumped and wrapped her legs around me, and we were just looking at each other. I should have just gone, but alas, I only realized after the fact months later. If I could go back in time, I would punch myself in the balls. You could always punch yourself in the balls now, sort of like a warning to your future self about your past self.
people in the adult film industry, what are some of the darkest secrets about it? Number one, I work in the industry here in LA. There are a lot of rumors and myths being brought up here. Some are true, some are false. All of my sources are from first-hand experience or conversations with other directors or producers. I have worked with every company besides Vix and Medigroup in smaller labels. Myth or fact, grooming and locking are real. As an extension, there is also such a thing as shoot houses, where producers and directors all live and film to cut costs. It is cheaper to pay a single mortgage than to rent a house or hotel dozens of times a month. These houses are typically very nice and inexpensive parts of L.A. However, they are not taken care of very well. This, in a way, also locks up your directors and crew. They rent a lot of the same houses and hotels that comply with permitless shoots. Your public shoots are permitless, as mentioned previously. In fact, companies use the same exact houses as each other very often. A daily house rental will cost around $800 for a 12- to 8-hour day. Realtors will use their open homes to rent to companies. This was the case with Mike Adriano and Greg Lansky's older stuff from the early 2000s, for example. The private parts are not fake. I can't reiterate this enough. Do you understand the sheer magnitude that would be required to rotoscope and generate a fake one for a scene that has a budget of like 4,000? The VFX talent alone will blow your budget in a week. CGI is the most expensive aspect of digital filmmaking. I edited for years. There's no way in hell they're paying someone to make a fake one where there are 12-inch ones at the ready. The photos, the box covers, all edited, all faked. This is your promo material. If the girl looks amazing in the front, you buy it. Then find out she's an acne-covered mess in the film. That's how it works. Fluffers are not real. Stop it. Stop saying this. It makes no financial sense to hire someone else when you're already paying someone 1000 to do it in the scene. Case closed. Now for the nasty nasty. Girls shoot during their periods. All the time. You never see blood, though. Why? Advertisers don't want it. There are rules on what advertisers will allow. Why? The credit card companies will not play ball with them if the ads contain certain things. What's this mean for a girl on a shoot with her period? You put a big old sponge inside. Don't forget to take it out or you'll have to go to the hospital because you can die and they forget all the time. This is called toxic shock syndrome. The fluid isn't always real. What I mean is that in your photos and some of your normal-looking shots, it's fake. They use Cetaphil a lot and ask the girl to spit on it and mix it up. Looks completely legit. They shoot without rubber knowing that people have S. This was one of the things that took me back when I came into the industry. They won't typically shoot with acute S tests are mandatory every 30 days. Most will not shoot if your test is older than 14 days. It depends on the talent. Serious S do break out into the industry, but not as often as you think. The reason is because of crossover talent. The idea that all women in the industry are mistreated paycheck-grabbing dolls is false. Some of these girls love what they're doing. You can tell the difference in the raw footage. Some are better fakers than others, but there are girls in it for the love of the game. Men use all kinds of interesting things to keep themselves excited. Almost every single guy uses one or a combination of these methods. Here are the choices. Pills, IV shot, surgically implanted pump. It functions exactly like a Reebok pump. Exactly. There is no union for the adult industry or for talent. However, they have tried to unionize. This leads to a lot of unfair practices. The difficulty, however, is the cost that would be incurred in the form of union fees as well as by the production companies. They will likely just go around the union and hire vagabonds because there is always a girl in need of a check. A lot of the girls have serious mental health issues and dependencies, pure nut jobs, but in a sad, circumstantial way. It's heartbreaking, really, for a lot of them. Almost every girl in the adult film industry is a model. This is the thing no one wants you to know. Shoots really aren't the best way to make money. It is just a way for girls to advertise and brand themselves. It's a different world now. Lots of girls leave the industry to dance, and we all know what dancers do when no one is looking. Same crap here. I know this isn't a dark secret, but I'll give you a rundown of how a shoot typically works. Crew arrives and sets up. Minimal skeleton crew, almost always. The director blocks the scene. Female talent arrives first. She gets hair and makeup. The crew finishes setting up. Male talent arrives. The director works with the talent, discussing the scenes and choosing the female talent's outfit. They take 10 minutes. Then talent comes in for photos.
photos go first. Photos are all staged unless you have a photographer to do sales mid-scene, but this is rare. This takes up to three hours. The male talent's dong is up most or all the time. The talent gets into the act, but only enough to make the photo look believable. Once the photos are done, talent will have a small snack, fix makeup, and get back into the wardrobe. The director blocks intro dialogue with talent. They shoot it. There's a connector shot that is essentially the transition into physical relations. Once it begins, some companies shoot straight through, non-stop. Some will cut and give direction. It depends on the style. Shooting stops when the female talent requests, the director cuts, the male talent is soft when the completion is reached. In the case of being soft, the male talent is excused to figure it out, or he and the female talent figure it out together. Female talent is given a kill free, and the shoot is rescheduled either with the same male talent or a replacement. When the shoot is over, everyone wraps up. Talent gets showered or dressed and goes home. The director drops footage off at the studio. Number two. In the last few months, there have been several shocking cases that were hosted on a very well-known prawn website. A young girl who had been missing for a year was finally found after her mother was tipped off that her daughter was being featured in videos on the site. Fifty-eight such videos of her were discovered. Her perpetrator, who was seen in the videos, was identified using surveillance footage of him at a 7-Eleven where he was spotted with his victim. He's now facing a felony charge. Also in recent news was the case of 22 women who were deceived and coerced by Michael Pratt, owner of another website, into performing physical relationship acts on film that were subsequently uploaded to that website. These women sued the website and won a 12.7 million lawsuit against the company. Pratt reportedly fled the United States for New Zealand and is currently wanted on a federal warrant. But there are other individuals who should also be wanted by law enforcement. CEO Ferris Antoon Dizio of MindGeek, the company that owns this site. This is just one story. There are still a lot of other celebrated cases of child violation videos being uploaded and verified on the website. The Internet Watch Foundation confirmed 118 cases of the said videos. The Sunday Times investigation found dozens of illegal videos in minutes. PayPal cuts off service to their website amid evidence on site. Nicole Edamondo of New York was sentenced to life in prison after fatally attacking her perpetrator, who violated her and uploaded videos of her violations to the website. Fourteen victims of Taiwan's Justin Lee had their violation videos on that site. Number three, the grooming and locking. If you've never heard of locking, it's basically when a group of girls doing adult films are living together, typically, and they're pressured to spend their money by producers who claim to be their friends in mostly simple ways going out to bars, buying expensive clothes or shoes, anything they can do to get them to spend their money. And it's not just spending their money. Many of these girls are told they have to pay for the rent, food, etc., after previously being told it was free. They're also told to get cosmetic procedures, which burns through a lot of their money. Eventually, they get sucked into doing more videos for a lesser cost because their managers and producers are now also their roommates or landlords. The goal here is to diminish any sort of saving money thought process, and they make it out like the money will never stop coming. This keeps them broke and makes them do more shoots. Number four. I'm a dancer. I've been one for 15 years. There's a motto we often live by. Never take a dump where you eat, meaning never work in the same city as you live. It can be as serious as seeing a man from the club sitting outside your house because he's certain that no matter how many times you tell him no, He's convinced you are secretly in love with him. It can be as simple as someone recognizing you in the grocery store, having respect and doesn't say anything, but he's still there. Once you've made the decision to sell yourself, men think all that's left is haggling over the price. Well, it's not. Just because I'm comfortable on stage and can hold a conversation while my lingerie is on your head doesn't mean I want that environment everywhere I go. Your revved-up wife will go down in the kitchen, is not expected to do the same thing while she's shopping for yams and eggs, so why do they think I'll do it? The most scary? When someone thinks they know me more as a person now and get special privileges because they tried to wave at me while I was doing laundry somewhere. I had a young man run up to me in Home Depot, like I was his long-lost high school girlfriend, so he could introduce me to his beer buddies, because two weeks earlier, I'd ridden him around the stage like a donkey at his bachelor party at the club. 
Dude, I'm not your girlfriend just because I wrote Athena was here on your back with a magic marker as part of the show. All the other dancers you hired to participate did it too. Go away. I'm trying to buy a new pond for my turtles. Damn. People should realize that a job is just a job and people don't take it home with them. Number five. One, amateur homemade 18-year-old videos are likely not 18. Two, the industry doesn't care about protecting minors. If it were legal, they'd go as low as they could. See, Japan, Color Climax, Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords' case is especially despicable due to all the hate she received when it came out. She was not legal in her videos and even younger in her pinups, as well as the fact that in 1987, they made an adult film about her case. Three, a popular media sharing platform in that industry specifically makes it especially difficult to get minors taken down from the site, even if you report multiple times. Several famous minors are actually recommended search terms. Number four, not really the industry, but whenever there's a high-profile violation in the news, the victim's name becomes a popular search term in all sites. Number six, the financial structures of the business are remarkable. The amount of money flowing through the industry is huge beyond comprehension, but in the end, it ends up in just a few pockets. Companies behind large tube sites are earning the bulk of the money by taking revenue from advertisements, memberships, and producing studios that pay tube sites. So said tube sites feature their films on the homepage. In the meantime, those producers suffer heavily from the terabytes of pirated content that is uploaded daily. Tube sites often refuse to take responsibility for illegal content, stating that they're only a platform that they cannot be held accountable for what individual users upload. Lately, there have been quite some uproar about some videos. A number of girls appearing in those videos stated that they were anesthetized and then forced to do things that they would have never agreed on. While this case was in court, some tube sites refused to take those videos offline while users still uploaded them. Number seven. They recruit young women from troubled homes or those who rebel against their parents. They lure the men with money and the ability to live free and do what they want. All they have to do is do some amateur adult material. Once away from friends and family, they're put in a house with other young women in the industry and give a room. They bond and go to shoots or whatever. They get paid a lot and they love it. Some get hooked on illegal substances and almost all have bad experiences. The person who owns the house they live in takes a cut of everything. It's all a bunch of teen girls, so it's not a very clean place. The turnover rate is astounding as well. It's a miracle, essentially, if you last longer than four months without a mental breakdown or go home and never return. Not all people who go into the amateur adult film industry come from bad homes. Though 40% of actresses report being violated as children, it's not indicative of the industry or the people employed within. Number eight. Nowadays, it's very similar to a studio-style 9-to-5 job. Nobody's really making a lot of money anymore. I've been in and out of it for about 25 years. It's morphed into this industry where smarter people use the industry to build a brand. The people that were popular 25 years ago wouldn't get far today because they were primarily interested in getting paid up front for shooting scenes. If I'm going to do this, I want 300, those types, so those people could get out and get paid 600 per film, which was great money back in 2001. Many people busted their bums to make as much content as they could, but there was no residual income after that. So that's why in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were simply so many films. Now the women are tracking their income on the back end with things like Snapchat and OF. It's not a cleaner industry by any means. Number nine. I remember watching some documentary or something of the sort about adult film fans from the UK going off to America to meet their favorite stars or something. A segment of the show was about stars meeting fans and doing the dirty with them. And the girls were beginning to look really ragged by the third guy or group of guys. I can't remember. Anyhow, after the fans are done with it, the production staff, who've been sitting there all day filming all of it, exercise their owner's rights on the girls, who by this time are well and truly spent. I don't know how much of this is true or if it's sensationalized, but I remember thinking to myself how monstrous the act and idea of it are. There really isn't that much separation between what the crew was shown doing. Number 10, special effects people sometimes get side jobs making fake members. The really ridiculously huge ones are likely prosthetic. It's easy to tell if it's one of those scenes where the guy leaves his pants on and just slightly pulled down or something like that. 
I remember one from more than a decade ago where this adult film star and crew picked up a random old man pushing carts at a grocery store, and it just so happens he has a huge one. He kept his pants up and legs together the whole scene. He just kind of sat there with his eyes wide open, holding this obviously fake one at the base, while the actress did all the work. Number 11. No health care. A big problem is that adult content scenes are shot in a way that is visually stimulating but not actually safe. Think of scenes where an actress is made to go full Nelson. There's nothing pleasurable about this position, but it lets you see the girl's entire body and the guy's member all in one shot. So basically, you're going to be forced to do painful and potentially dangerous things because they look good on camera. So, what happens when you inevitably get hurt? Well, any injuries are considered your fault. You don't get paid any health care, and the studio won't take responsibility for hurting you, even if they force you to overuse your body. A sad side effect is the number of guys copying these positions. They don't feel good for the guy or girl, and you'll just hurt your partner. Regular missionary is legitimately one of the most enjoyable positions, yet it is avoided for being too boring. Number 12. I used to work security at a studio. How many times I find myself comforting some crying girl, saying how she wanted to go home and how she was hurting, but they knew or felt their families wouldn't take them back was heartbreaking. And the studio heads were relentless, wanting multiple scenes shot per day, regardless of how the actors and actresses felt. There were so many good people involved in the industry, all being messed up by how ruthless the industry is. I've seen seven-foot muscular tanks of men curled up and breaking down because their bodies are all messed up from illegal substances and because they don't want to hurt these girls, but they have to. So many girls who I suspect were lied to about their age cry after every shoot, the camera crew seeing all this just as I was and feeling it just as much as me. All the while, the studio heads left their way to the bank and were offering illegal substances left, right, and center. And everything came with antidepressants, the ones that would get you hooked onto. Unfortunately, those who are in this industry largely can't get out of it because there's a social stigma against working with or hiring someone who's done adult entertainment. I was able to get a couple of the male stars jobs with my security company because my bosses don't care. While they don't often talk about it, they have mentioned that their members work normally again and that they're off the antidepressants. I honestly don't know a good way out for the girls, though, which is truly tragic because so many were so sweet, intelligent, and physically capable. Were it not for the social stigma or the fact that they've done adult film, they'd be super employable. Number 13. I don't think people realize just how many videos contain people being traded. I'll elaborate on some, but I encourage you to research this more. Today, there are an estimated 30 million people being traded. This is modern-day servitude. People are bought and sold as property for the purposes of being vasals, forced labor, even organ harvesting. It is so repulsive, yet so hidden and unknown. The sad thing is that the youth get caught up in their after-natural disasters or other tragic situations. For example, with a recent explosion in Lebanon, criminals may set up orphanages that are not registered with the state, and just like that, one can be taken. I learned much podcast episode with Timothy Owens as a guest in the Candace Owens show. Even if you aren't conservative, this is a good, objective, and informative discussion to listen to. Number 14. I think a lot of people don't realize that most of the girls that got into it only did a few scenes after they handled the stress of being bare in front of people, and they usually have to get checked to see how bad they got torn up inside. Also, most of the time, the girls are baked and usually on pain medications. Seriously, I read some old stories from adult film stars back in the 90s that admitted they had to take pain medication because rent and bills were due at the beginning of the month, and that meant doing some scenes. One star that I read up on confesses that it helped her get her master's degree and helped her kids through college early, but she also confessed that she no longer does some things and will only do regular acts. She also likes that her husband is small. She had nightmares from what she experienced back then. Number 15. Violation is common, and so is coercion. Yes, I know coercion is a violation. I'm trying to specify economic coercion. I've read stories of ex-adult film actresses who talked about showing up thinking they were doing one scene and being told they would be doing something else. 
and if they refused, they would be fired. Many of these women are poor and struggle to make ends meet. So they are offered illegal substances and booze to get through the scene, most scenes. I saw a talk show episode with a blooper, and some poor girl was crying and throwing up while everyone around her laughed. Women are treated horribly on set. The disregard for their well-being is shocking. Many girls and young boys are traded and adult content is used to advertise them. Many girls who don't do adult content suffer the consequences of their adult content-obsessed boyfriends. Some girls experience pressure to do dangerous things or just pressure to give a sloppy all the time. All of this I learned from various sources and also from Dr. Gail Dines, who studies the effects of adult content in our culture. People have read it. What's your funniest story about doing the dirty? Number one. So my friend was exploring Australia, totally okay, by the way, and got intimate with a guy who ended up barfing all over the room while they were in the middle of it at his hostel. He accidentally covered not only his roommate's belongings, but also my friend's favorite undies in the mess. The next morning, the roommate returned, absolutely furious, chugged a gallon of milk and then barfed it all up on the guy while he was still asleep. We have a membership for those who like more interesting stories that aren't advertiser-friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing What the Confessions members community and support the channel. Number two. All right, a friend of mine told me this about a mutual friend's honeymoon. He and his new bride were in their hotel room the night of their wedding. He was sitting on the bed with his wife and leaned in to kiss her on the neck, but he could tell that she was nervous. She pulled away and said she needed to go to the bathroom to prepare herself. So he was sitting there alone in the bed thinking, well, crap, I needed to do something to make her more comfortable with me. So he decided that when she came out, he'd just be laying on the bed bare with an excited physique so that she would have to get accustomed to it. So he got completely bare and was laying there wondering about any other ways to make her realize that these things were no big deal. And for some reason, he decided that when she came out, he'd just pass gas really loud. And in his idiotic mind, he decided that he'd do it on her when she came out. The door to the bathroom was very close to the bed. I know, it's very stupid. So she came out and he was standing on the bed with his bum aimed towards the bathroom door, and in effect her, and he lifted his leg up and passed gas as hard as he could. Turns out he messed all over the bed, the floor, the wall, the bathroom door, and his new bride. She screamed, pushed him over, and ran out of the hotel room. Nobody could find her for a week after that. They've been happily married for five years now. Wow, that was definitely a honeymoon to remember. Number three. You might not believe it, but this is a totally true story that went down with my ex-girlfriend and me. Really hoping someone catches this. During high school, my parents had this big, seriously nice shower. It had a small seat built into it, about knee height, and there were towels hanging on the wall behind that seat. It was perfect for those intimate moments, because we could keep going without ever getting tired. So one day, when my parents were out of town, my ex-girlfriend and I decided to hop into the shower. We were kissing, and eventually, she sat on that little seat or ledge, and I knelt down, and, well, things started heating up. The shower was steamy or sweaty, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Suddenly, she started whimpering. Not the sexy kind, something different. And it felt weird. I glanced at her face, and she was crying. So I leaned back and asked her what was wrong. She wouldn't say a word but looked incredibly upset, shivering. I kept asking her what was wrong and if she was okay, but she just pointed silently at my junk. I glanced down and saw the biggest spider I'd ever seen was just chilling there. I freaked out, slapped it away and did that horrifyingly disgusting dance you do when something scares the wits out of you. The spider dashed off. Turns out it had been hiding in the towels, followed into our laps and bit my girlfriend. It was hands down the most horrifying thing I had ever experienced during an intimate moment. Funny to think about now, though. Number four. Okay, here goes. It all started ages ago when I was figuring things out. I was exploring how guys' bodies worked and how much fun it could be. But then it got boring. That's when I heard about playing the flute. I met this guy who said he knew how to do it. Turns out he really didn't. As he got started, I leaned back, thinking this guy... Alan believed in a gentle touch with his teeth. Turns out his teeth were like sharp blades. While he tried, his teeth ended up hurting me. I jerked back and glanced down. He pushed in aggressively, 
did something totally off, and carried on. He damaged a few layers, making things pretty sore, then he spat something on the floor, called me names, and bolted. I rushed to the bathroom and covered myself up, then poured rubbing alcohol on it, hoping to kill any germs. But I forgot that alcohol burns, unlike peroxide. I screamed in pain as my plan backfired, and I swore never to do that again. Fast forward three months, I met this guy. He talked me into letting him give it a try. I said, okay. As he started, it was unexpectedly amazing. But then he accidentally choked and took in a big breath, which, uh, engulfed me. He gagged and ended up barfing on me. It was a total mess. As he was recuperating and I was outside trying not to vomit myself, I promised myself never to receive it again. Jumping had a year. I was at a bathhouse, feeling pretty tipsy, standing on a ramp while someone was doing their thing. I was really into it. Suddenly he slipped on who knows what, maybe a puddle, and whacked his chin right into my hip, then toppled down towards my chest. Then I promised myself never to have someone blow my bagpipes again. Number five. I started college at the University of Florida. I wasn't exactly inexperienced, but I wasn't as seasoned as I wanted to be. Ended up at a frat party. There was this really hammered girl clinging to me all night, who ended up in her dorm room. I was pretty pleased with myself. Her roommate was sound asleep just a few feet away. She immediately got down to business and things escalated quickly. In about 30 seconds, I realized I really needed to use the bathroom. I was getting critical. Eventually, just as I was about to burst, it happened. I relieved myself for a good ten seconds before managing to stop. Her exact words were, Wow, that was a lot. She, uh, handled it. Let me reluctantly share the specifics. Every guy knows that post-party heavy bladder feeling. It's either go or face dire consequences. I've been in similar situations where I've had to abruptly halt intimacy just to use the bathroom, barely making it in time. And no. It wasn't a continuous stream. Guys also understand how it goes after intimacy. Sudden erratic bursts. Number six. So I had this friend who used to head to Scotland for the weekend. Being Irish, those trips were a breeze for me. Anyway, he was drawn there mainly because of his fondness for the accents. Even got pretty serious with a few girls he met there. One weekend, he was in a pub and spotted this absolutely stunning girl at the bar. Now he wasn't claiming to be the most dashing guy and she was a solid ten, but he decided to give it a shot, hoping she had a thing for Irish guys. They struck up a conversation, and things were going surprisingly well. After a few drinks as the bar was closing, my friend invited her back to his hotel. To his delight, she agreed. Things got a bit heated in his hotel room, and just as he was about to, you know, address, he asked if there was anything specific she'd like. And in her thick Scottish accent, she replied, Yeah, that is. I need about 350. Turns out she wasn't an extraordinary girl, but a giant crustacean from the Jurassic period. My friend replied, No chance looking this monster. No 350 for you. Well, that's some real life South Park situation right there. Dude did the right thing and noped out quickly. If you enjoy my stories about people getting their freak on, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Number 7. Right before my freshman year in college, I had my first girlfriend who was up for intimate moments pretty much all the time. And one night after a party, I couldn't wait for 30 minutes to get home. We cruised around the neighborhood looking for a private spot. We settled in a middle school. Seemed like a great idea, right? No classes, late at night, hidden from view by a long driveway and trees. We started doing our thing in the parking lot. Suddenly, around 15 minutes later, Eight police cars came roaring in with lights flashing. They ordered me out of the car pronto. My girlfriend was freaking out. She was completely bare at the time. I complied right away, which meant my pants and undies were off, and my shirt wasn't quite enough to cover stuff. My girlfriend stayed put, thank goodness. The cops rushed over, but their angry expressions turned to utter confusion. What they saw was clearly not what they expected. Turns out there were break-ins at the school in the nearby elementary school. The police were staking out the place. When they saw a black car pull in, they thought they had the culprits. The funniest part? Once they figured out we weren't there to rob the place, the sergeant turned to me and said, You can probably put your pants on now, buddy. Number eight. So here's a story from a friend of mine who seems to enjoy sharing this tale for some reason. He's quite the confident guy. Maybe he'll provide more details sometime, but here's the story. 
One day my friend had a girl over. They were flirting, things escalated, and they ended up in the bedroom. You know, the usual sequence. As things got more intimate, my friend proposed trying out a sailor's cup of tea. Surprisingly, the girl agreed. Well, that's what my friend went on. So my friend's dad unexpectedly came home. My friend was completely unaware. His dad barged through the door only to find his son and the girl in a compromising situation. My friend was startled, to say the least. To quote him, it was an embarrassing moment. About five to six pounds of mess came after. There was my dad stunned and yelling while I stood there frozen in sheer terror and my statue still upright. Seriously, I don't get why he kept telling this at parties. Number nine, allow me to set the scene. It was finals week in high school, and my then-girlfriend and I wanted to have some fun since we both had the same fine loft. So we headed to the woods across the street from school and decided that would be the spot. The ground there was pure gravel, so we spread our clothes out and lay on top. We then proceeded to have the worst intimate moment ever. It was dreadful. I had to go slow the entire time. My knees got grazed and we weren't close enough, so we called it off. As I stopped, I noticed it was red down there. Looking up, I saw she had stained my shirt red too. Cue face palms. We decided to lie there bare for a while before getting dressed and heading back to school. When we finally got dressed, I realized my thing was super swollen. I checked and saw two little bites from a spider. What a shame, man. Then I had to return to school for my final. You could practically smell the intimacy and shame. Plus, having a stain from the wound on my shirt didn't help. Everyone knew, but nobody said a thing. The scent filled the room, and about midway through the final, my thing came back to life, and the pain hit me. I just had to sit there. Number 10. I am seriously going to regret sharing this. But PSA, handling excessive amounts of strong chili, demands extreme caution. Let's just say, after indulging in habanero-loaded nachos one evening last year, a regrettable choice was made in the intimate department. With a mere couple of seconds, I knew something was incredibly wrong. A full-blown, I immediately regret this moment. I found myself standing there, howling for a solid minute before frantically jumping into the shower, pouring milk all over to ease the horrendous burning pain. No one should ever have to resort to pouring milk in such an awkward spot. Absolutely no one. Yikes. Things got seriously hot and spicy down there. If you made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps our channel grow. Number 11. I started hanging out with this really shy girl from my high school days. We hadn't seen each other in years, but things clicked, and we decided to grab some drinks. Later that night, we ended up in her bed. At this point, I'm down to my boxers and a crisp new white undershirt. Because of her shyness, she wasn't very experienced intimately, making it tough to explore new things. I managed to convince her to try something different. Then I heard what I thought was just her. About 20 minutes later, I headed to the bathroom for a quick break and surprise. There's a liquid mask splattered all over the front of my new white shirt. It was a disgusting situation considering her existing insecurities about intimacy. I casually mentioned that you might want to check her sheets as there was a little issue in my shirt. She simply replied with an okay, rolled over, and went back to sleep. Number 12. It was early morning and I was in bed with my boyfriend. I woke up to his movements, only to find out he was, well, taking care of his business. I jokingly offered my assistance, but he seemed completely absorbed in his own world. Half asleep and feeling a bit rejected, I shed a few tears. Little did I know he was actually fast asleep, hence the lack of response. Turns out my boyfriend sleep faps. Number 13. There was this guy back in college who planned a romantic shower moment with his girlfriend. The problem was the showers were those communal ones, not exactly the most private, so he somehow coordinated with the whole hall to vacate the bathroom for a few hours in the day his girlfriend visited. What he didn't see coming was the entire hall gathering outside the showers, blasting lonely islands I just had seen, and giving them a round of applause as the happy couple stepped out of the showers. Number 14. So my friend and his girlfriend were getting busy when they realized the rubber he had just put on was ripped. She went to remove it, but I guess she wasn't savvy with that stuff, so she yanked it from the tip, causing him some serious discomfort. It turned into a mess. What's amusing, well, sort of, 
is that he ended up needing stitches and was told to avoid any activity near his thing for about four weeks. But he couldn't wait, tried to get back into action in less than a week, and ended up ripping out all the stitches. Number 15. So I had this close friend who worked as a male for male ass. He came home one day with something stuck in a rather uncomfortable place. The thing meant to keep it from going too far wasn't doing its job too well. Luckily it was visible, but it was pretty slippery because of, well, Centaur. He could have managed to get it out himself. I suggested he go to the ER, but he was paranoid. He was worried they might figure out his line of work and spill the beans to his parents. After several pairs of gloves and a hemostat, I managed to get the thing out, but in the process I couldn't help but notice that he was sick down there. Number 16. So there was this moment when I was busy with my girlfriend and my futon, and suddenly my mom walked in. I quickly threw a blanket over us, trying to cover up the situation, and accidentally bumped my mom into a metal bar quite forcefully. Luckily, my mom was cool about it, and all I could hear was her laughing as she walked away down the hallway. About 15 seconds later, well, we resumed, because, you know, why not? And there was this other time. My girlfriend dressed up for some role-playing schoolgirl vibes, but yet again my mom managed to walk in at the most inconvenient time. She had a whole chat with my girlfriend for what felt like ages while I sat awkwardly in the living room, avoiding being in the same room with my mom, all while trying to hide my excitement. Number 17. I once went on a picnic in the woods with my first boyfriend. As two amorous individuals or innocent sandwich eating turned into something more intimate. We were at a state park in the middle of a weekday and hadn't spotted anyone around, so we didn't think twice about it. Things were heating up. We heard someone shout, yeah, doer. Turns out there was a cycling club gathered on the path about ten yards away. A dozen guys had been watching us the whole time talk about embarrassing. It suddenly became the main attraction back there. Number 18. Once I walked into my completely wild friend, caught in the act with a jar of jelly in the bathroom. The next morning, when he questioned us about it, we naturally claimed ignorance. Another time... One of my buddies was about to hook up with this weird girl. She abruptly got out of bed, fetched a cold Pepsi from the fridge, poured it all over the stuff down there, and made him watch while she did something with a can. I believe they still proceeded afterward, but he always leaves this story hanging at that point. Number 19. My friend had his grandparents over at his place for a week. Being like most guys, we went for some alone time. He was caught up in the moment and didn't hear the door open when his grandfather walked right in. Startled, she grabbed him by his dong and called out for his grandfather to witness what their grandson was caught doing. Number 20. Once, while being intimate with a guy in a tent, I accidentally got something stuck up there, causing considerable discomfort. Regrettably, it was lodged too far in to retrieve immediately, so I had to rely on movement to wiggle it out, as one might expect that camping trip didn't turn out too great. Number 21. So there's this story my friend shared at a dinner party about himself. He and his wife were getting hot and heavy, and she seemed a bit lost in thought. He decided to kick it up a notch with some naughty talk before taking things further. He goes, you want something big to satisfy you, right? She responds with, no, I want yours. And that's the end of that scene. Isn't that sweet? She loves him for who he is and not for what he's packing. Number 22, I'll make it short. My girlfriend was in the heat of the moment. She made a certain sound. Here's the kicker. My brain decided to pull off something incredibly foolish. I blurted out, three, two, one, blast off. Needless to say, she's now my ex. I have no regrets. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and see you in the next one. What's the wildest thing you've ever done? Number one, I got a sloppy from my ex while we were having a conversation with her mom. We were talking about the movie Roger Rabbit, and my ex would stop looking long enough to chime in, then keep going. We were in the same room. Her back was to us while she was doing the dishes. All she had to do was turn around. Number two, I had a girl bite me down there once. I wasn't just using a little too many teeth to spice it up. She bit me and caused a wound, on purpose. I got mad and kicked her out, and she didn't understand why. A couple of weeks later, after I had it healed, I invited her back over, Lauki, hoping she'd do it again, but she didn't do it again. I know it sounds odd, but there was a very sensual thrill to not knowing what was going to happen, 
not to mention the very interesting blend of being submissive to her and then being dominant over her when I kicked her out. It was just a crazy situation, and I loved it, for real. It's just the primal urge to get super freaky. A part of me liked the pain she forced upon me without my consent. The adrenaline rush of not knowing whether or not she'd do it again. The submission aspect of that and the dominant nature of me kicking her out were an edgy and playful combination of sensual roles. It's not really the biting that I liked. It was the submission, I think. I normally have to be the dominant one, which I like, but not knowing whether I'd still have my member attached to me at the end of the night. That fear kind of turned me on, to be honest. Number three, I keep the key to a male chastity device. The lock is on a man I've never met, and he sends me hundreds of dollars every month to make fun of him via text. The former co-worker used to do it. She was having trouble in her marriage and introduced me to him via instant messenger so that I could take the key. This has been going on since 2006. I don't get it, and it's weird to me, but last year I ended up with about 50 grand in cash and gifts, so I'm not complaining. The one he has is metal. I do know they make plastic ones. It does go under the underwear. I don't have an idea about the comfort factor, though. He doesn't seem to mind. The weirdest part is that he has a wife. And once a month, if I allow it, I will let him have the key overnight so he can unlock it and have some fun with her. The longest I've kept him locked up is 150 days. They have a weird relationship from what I understand, and he asked her to keep the key, but she wanted nothing to do with it. At first, I thought the messages he wanted me to send him were pretty strange, but I've gotten used to them already. He likes to be humiliated, so mostly I just call him names or make fun of the size of his member. When I want extra money, I put more effort into it and make him dress up in his wife's clothes and go put gas in his car or wear women's lingerie to work. He enjoys that and readily hands over any amount of cash I demand. It's harder work than you'd think. Clients can get pretty demanding for time and emotional work, and it can be pretty exhausting to have a job that kind of boils down to do exactly what I want, but you can't ask me what I want because the purpose of this transaction is for me to feel completely powerless. But you have to be good at making fun of him without making him feel the wrong kind of bad, or he'll end the arrangement and potentially begin a long campaign of harassment. The only thing I know is that the kink that those devices and arrangements satisfy is chastity. It's about giving power to someone else, someone who the client eventually cares about, especially her happiness rather than their own happiness. The woman could then tell the client to do whatever she wanted. Usually, clients do something humiliating and then just get a thank you from her. Plus, once she lets the client out, the kink is amazing. Number four. He came to visit me at school one day to drop off lunch, and I gave him an unofficial tour. It led to me showing him the theater where I spent a lot of time because of my performing arts classes and drama club meetings. In the back of the theater, there were these stairs that led up to an old bell tower that was no longer in use. So we snuck up there and found a few things that we decided to play with. There was one of those big spools in the middle and he pushed it so it lay on its side, draped me over it and used my legs as a way to make the spool roll back and forth in the bell tower. It wasn't my sea adventure, but it was one of my more exciting ones. Whoa, I guess what they say is true. The theater geeks are some of the freakiest people out there. If you like these kinds of threads, hit the like button, and while you're at it, subscribe to my channel to receive notifications of my latest videos. Number 5. On a trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico, I ended up going for a late-night hike with a girl I liked and some friends to a hot spring in a canyon. It was dark with awesome stars out and the springs were pretty small, so only two could fit in each one. Well, the girl I was digging in I stripped, got in the same pool and started to relax into the night. The second pool with my other friends was right next to us, so we had an easy, natural conversation and joint sharing took place. It was a very pleasant night. The pool I was in was small, so the girl I had to position our bodies facing each other with her legs kind of entangled. Well, I'm not sure how it started, but I started playfully tickling her inner thigh with my foot while continuing the conversation with friends. The girl was quiet, though, and even in the dark... I could feel her staring intently at me. I started to get excited because the whole situation was getting pretty sexy. I struggled to stay coherent and continue the conversation with my friends who were only a few feet from us. Then again, things ramped up. At this point, I got quiet since I couldn't fathom the situation and then she stopped. I felt her legs spasm and her breathing stopped. Our friends didn't know and I felt dizzy from being too frisky. 
but the stars were still beautiful, and we started our way back home. Number six. I went skinny dipping with an axe in a river and had some fun in the water at 10. 30 a.m., 200 yards from and in full view of a very busy highway. We had just gotten back to shore and got our clothes on when a minivan with a family of small kids pulled up. I often wonder what we would have done if they had pulled up one minute earlier. I guess we would have waited out in the water till they left and we could fetch our clothes. This isn't the case, but one that comes to mind, and I don't mind telling. Also, one ex-girlfriend really wanted to have a triad with her sister, but I had been up for seven days and chickened out due to the weirdness. Dang, sounds like quite a shame to miss out on that triad. Number seven, it's all about the location for me. There are lots of unique locations and situations, from outdoor public places and vacation spots, to restaurants, offices, etc. It's my favorite, but something I've only ever enjoyed with a significant other or semi-long-term FWB. It's so much easier to make it happen when you just spend a lot of time with a girl out and about, because you'll just find yourself somewhere, giving each other the look, and then go at it. The risk of being caught adds a lot more excitement. One time my girlfriend and I went to her cousin's. Fourth grade Christmas play. We snuck off and wandered around the school until we came upon the library. The door wasn't locked and the lights were off. We found a secluded aisle and immediately started to party. It was wild. I came upon the library a second time and we bounced. It's easily one of the craziest places I've had fun. Number eight. I had a little fun with a friend's wife while he was having fun with my ex-girlfriend in the same room at the same time. We weren't even buzzed or baked. It started with a conversation that had come up between all of us and jokingly, it started up and just went from there. We're still friends, and they're still married. A girlfriend and I broke up for other reasons. Honestly, it was fun, but it came with some anxiety. It only happened once, but I'd definitely say it was an enjoyable experience. Something I don't need to ever do again, but I'm happy I did it. I guess it takes a lot of planning and communication before doing it, which could lead to less or no anxiety. Like, my significant other. And I realized we have the same fantasy, but knew it was fantasy only. We spent years talking dirty about it before we went. Huh? Do you think this could be better as reality instead of fantasy? And then we talked about it with a few others for a long time before giving it a shot. And it was the most fun thing we'd ever tried. The mental preparation and extended communication between us made all the difference. Going back to my married couple friends, in hindsight, our other friends might have had a go at her. It's possible. But we didn't talk about it much after the fact. They're pretty open-minded and easy to talk to, so it's possible they're into swinging or whatever. Number nine. This happened back in 2008. I remember it so well because it was just amazing. I was a server and manager, and I kept flirting with another server. Never thought anything would ever happen, but the flirting kept getting bigger and bigger. Long story short, we ended up going into the bathroom graveyard shift so at 3 a.m no one was in the place and then said meet me outside by the dumpster area the dumpster area was closed off so no one could see anything it was the best sloppy of my entire life i literally am not joking i even said oh my god how are you doing this the girl was a god at giving sloppies i mean wow anyway i just wanted to share that number 10 i was offered e at a concert by some random dude 23 year old me said whatever, why not? He invited me back to his VIP table where it was just him and his girlfriend. The girlfriend is super cute and gave me a kiss as I sat down. Okay, she's just friendly, I think. Ten minutes go by and the E starts kicking in. I feel something grab me down there. The girlfriend of the guy was feeling me up. Both of my hands slammed to the table and I made eye contact with the dude. I say something like, dude, I'm not doing anything. He laughs and says, yeah, it's no big deal. She likes you. Um, okay. A little more goes and the show is winding down. I'm offered more E. They happily agree and down a gaggle. They invited me back to their place. Whatever. Let's go. I end up there in a hot tub with the guy's girlfriend and eventually we're having fun in their bed. Dude walks in and pretends to be all pissed. I stop immediately and she just laughs. Guy sits down on the couch and passes out immediately. I eventually fade in around 6 a.m. I notice the guy passed out on the couch and I quickly gather my stuff and run about a half mile home. Number 11. My ex ruined me intimately. 
I've yet to be with anyone since I've had so much crazy hot fun. I'm gay. She was a shy, crazy, and anxious lawyer. Smashed her so hard that we put my grandparents' Walter E. Smith couch legs through my wood floors in a Chicago rental. We kept going after relocating to the bedroom, and during a pause, she stood up to get some water and just passed out. I was a 911 dispatcher at the time, and she snored when she hit the floor face first. I took this as agonal breathing and panicked, thinking I had ended her because we were having too much intense fun. We'd been going at it for well over 48 hours. I called 911, rode with us to the hospital, and it turns out she was dehydrated and malnourished, and her blood pressure was way too low. 48 hours? Man, these two have the stamina of a penguin. Number 12, I've done a fair amount of naughty fixation stuff during my polyamorous period. Tried group stuff a few different ways. Played pet or slave with a couple for one night only alongside their full-time pet. And topping guys were all highlights. But the CII gave my assistant a hand with a blanket on his lap at a team bonding movie night. The whole team was there. Honestly, I could have lost my job. It was dumb. It was so inappropriate and unfair to them. They had no idea and did not consent to participate. And when I went through my poly phase after, I learned much better practices.